like the when I met you, like come closer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I want. I, well, okay, I, I I want you in frame, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know, I ran out of frame. <laughs> it's okay. But, um, I thought we were going for a romantic kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, that's okay too. I mean, that, that is okay too. But <laughs> after the podcast, in her streams, guys, in her streams. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Sweet Talking Podcast with your host. And I guess I'm pretty lovely. Your lovely host, Neferty. Hello. Hello. It's great to see you all again. And um, I am joined this time by uh, another special guest. It is uh, Galaxy is here. Yes, Galaxy is here. Hello. <laughs> Otherwise known as, <laughs> as Galaxy. And uh, she will be joining us. We'll be having a conversation together. We've been meeting to, uh, to catch up and really like get a chance to talk to each other and, and just get to know each other better. And why not? What better place to do that than my podcast in a, you know, somewhat of a, a public setting. But hey, we're just going to be having a good time, enjoying each other's company, and hopefully you enjoy whatever conversations come to light. And, you know... If you, as always, if you are enjoying the podcast series, you know, if you're enjoying a podcast, there's always, please be sure to, you know, like, subscribe, all those fun things, share, whatever. And uh, that'd be really, really appreciated. But, um, you know, of course, I'll remind you to do that, like, at the end of the podcast. But if you already like what I do and you just haven't hit the sub, uh, hit the sub button yet, that'd be really, really cool if you did that but hopefully you enjoy tonight's conversation with galaxy and i'm really looking forward to it and hopefully you all are as well so so to start things off galaxy how are you tonight yes i am well how are you beautiful i am doing well and i like <laughs> i just i get this very very strong feeling that you are you like you are a very beautiful person inside and out. I get this very I get this sense oh, of that. Art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, like I, I, I feel like that is like like just from talking to you and just the the short time that we've had time to just chat with each other. I've always I've just had this feeling that you not only are like you're you're very, very sweet, but I also feel like people who are very, very sweet have also kind of seen a lot or have gone through some things in their life but um i think i always feel like that that sweetness and that 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 generosity that kindness always comes from a genuine place and not simply because someone's just trying to be a certain way but because they feel like hey i've gone through x y and z and i want to make sure that people feel cared for and appreciated just like i would like that like is that something you, you can relate to yeah exactly yeah i definitely relate to that like Everyone's gone through some problems, and I feel like kind, being kind to someone just brings, like, if someone had a bad day, at least give them a compliment. Say, oh, wow, I love that dress on you. Wow. Have, I love this, love that on you. And just bring a smile to someone. I feel like bringing a smile to someone is just one of the greatest things to being kind. I agree. I definitely, definitely agree. And I, I would like to kind of, you know, maybe dig in a little bit into, you know, what you've like, what you've gone through, the things that you've seen and experienced and what kind of, what, what is the core of that, of that kindness that, you know, want to make everyone smile type of thing. But I'll ask you about that later. We'll get into that later on. <laughs> Let, let's start off, let's start off very oh, yeah. light and chill with, um, like, we already asked each other how we're doing. Just... Yeah, just keeping it real chill. <laughs> But um, no, first thing you go, what's your mental life problem? Problem? What, what crisis have you been through? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm definitely. I don't want to like. I, I have a tendency to just kind of go to the to the core of things, but I don't want to. I don't want to do that just yet. So, so all right. So you gotta tune in the podcast. To, you gotta listen more to the podcast to get to that juicy gossip. <laughs> exactly, exactly. See, see, see. Galaxy knows, but you know, I, I don't. I'm not one to spoil that. But you know, Galaxy knows the game, and that's important. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so listen close, guys. You gotta keep listening. Don't run. We. I know you're getting close. No, to keep listening. <laughs> mm -hmm. True. True. <laughs> So, so <laughs> let's start with um, just VR chat related stuff. I think that's pretty, it's pretty easy. So, 
Um, how about you introduce yourself? Um, like, tell everyone who you are, what you enjoy, um, like how long you've been in VR chat for, what your hobbies, what are your likes, your dislikes, things that you're that you're afraid of, things that you just like, things that you like to do in your spare time. <laughs> you know, just a general you know introduction yeah. of yourself. Well, uh, my username is Galaxy is here. I've been playing this game for about since about. 2015, 2016, around that area. Uh, I haven't been playing straight through. There's always been a couple years, like a, my laptop broke, and I haven't, I wasn't able to play for like two years. But the um, I still kept up with friends. Uh, the best thing about I've learned from VR chat is making friends. I deal with social anxiety, so being going out and meeting people has been a hard thing for me but with vr chat it's been so much easier like i have so many new friends i meet from here like meeting you that was one of the best things ever of course <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> you're too kind <laughs> oh yeah we're that that's later <laughs> right 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see uh, I mean, there's always creepy people that you meet on VR chat. There's always like, you see all these horror things about VR chat. The same things with the good things on VR chat. Like, for me, being a TikTok watcher, I've seen like the ups and downs of VR ch VR chat with those kind of videos. Like, I've seen the e couples. I've seen the creepers. I've seen the trolls. I've been on the VR chat for fifteen, not fifteen years. Uh, been here since 2015. You see. So many crazy things in this game. Mm -hmm. Me nowadays, I stay mm -hmm. in mostly uh, private worlds. One because there's just a lot of avatars, so it's easy for people who are like on a quest or on bad PCs for them to crash. And that's a main issue with VR chat, but I mostly stay in private worlds mm -hmm. for that reason, though. Yeah, yeah. So lately, we've been going to rave worlds. <laughs> that is true. That's true. We we have been kind of diving into that realm of, of VR chat, which has been very, very fascinating. I haven't really, I've only recently found out about that side of VR chat, and it's been really, really interesting just engaging with that side of thing. It really is like what something would find in real life, but it's just its own culture. It's like a sub subculture, <laughs> which is, it's so, it's so interesting, yeah. so fascinating. Yeah, so many interesting people in that scene as well. Yeah, that's all I've noticed. I've never went to a rave world until like a couple weeks ago with the PTs group. Mm -hmm. And then me and you went to that one with, with Red Set, which yeah. is, was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, that definitely was new to me for sure. Because mm -hmm. I've never really went to them before. I've never even heard there were raves in VR chat until recently. Yeah, yeah. I I also only recently found out about them when um through Fifi. Also, um, Fifi has been on the podcast. Um, his episode should already be up by the time this one is up. So check it out. Um, but um, yeah, Fifi is the one who really introduced me to the the rave scene and and just what that all what that all is and met some very 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 cool people. And yeah, it's just it's so so great to know that people who you know suffer from social anxiety do have a, a means of having genuine interactions with people just in in spaces where they may feel more comfortable in and i think that's what's i think that's the really that's the most magical thing about vr chat being able to create a space that you feel comfortable in or be just in a space you're comfortable in and ultimately having an opportunity to get to know people and make friends and you know, some of those friends, you know, last for a lifetime. Oh, yeah. That's the best part. To me, that's one of the best parts about VR chat is meeting the people around. Like, I would, being in real life, I would have never met people who are from France or from Japan or from different places around the country, around the earth. Like, I would have never. This has been the best part about meeting new people in this game. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, one of my friends, Honey, he's from France, and, like, I would have never met him if it wasn't for VR chat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, I, I, like, 
It's funny that you mentioned that because there was a time, like I've I've been alive for a very very long time. I'm not gonna say how long I am. I'm <laughs> I, I've been around for a while. So it's it's always so fascinating to for people to say like, oh, I would have never have met someone from X country or like a different location at all because like, I feel like we're in a time where that has already been able to exist that already exists like with just like i have met people from singapore long before social media was ever a thing like i've like i've some i've met people just by being on the internet from different countries but you know i feel like now you have platforms like vr chat in which people are like well i would have never met someone from a different country had i never been a part of this this platform this technology this this general social experience and it's so cool that and fascinating that now we're just in a place where we can like meet those people more or less face to face it's not simply through text it's not simply through usernames it's it's te it's usernames sometimes text if, if they happen to be mute and just being able to have conversations with them, hear their voice, or, you know, if they're not using a voice changer, you know, you know you, there, there are all these other factors, but for the most part, having a face-to-face -face interaction yeah. with people, which is super, super fascinating. And it's, just, it's, another, it's another layer of social interaction that has already existed, but is now just been enhanced with the advent of like VR and everything. Yeah, I agree, exactly. It's just so much nicer getting to know someone. Like, I know there's other games, like playing games online with people, like uh, voice calls and stuff like that. But with VR chat, it's almost like you're talking to them face to face. Exactly. It's, it's like you have, it's almost, especially when you're in VR, it's like you're merged in a v VR headset. And it's almost exactly like talking face to face. PC is a little bit different, but... I mean, you can't help not having a VR. A lot of people don't can afford one, which is fine. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> I, I I really like I have come to really appreciate VR chat because you said you've been you said you've been using VR chat, you've been on VR chat off and on more or less since 2015, which was probably like when it first came out. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's literally seven years, about to be eight. So that's that's crazy. Can you can you share a little a bit about how how it's changed, how VR chat has changed since then? Oh, okay. So with this world, um, I'm pretty sure it didn't even have a downstairs or that room over there with all the pool boards and everything like that. That never even was in this world. I think it only had the first level when I first started. Mm -hmm. Or this world wasn't even created. The most popular back in the day was... Um, gosh, what's that world? The Pug? The Pug world was the most oh. popular. Oh, the... Uh, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, the... Yeah, yeah. I know I know which one you're talking about. The... Uh, it's like the something pub? Something pug? I don't... Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. And then... Yeah. Yeah, and the loading screens are way different. It was mostly, um, before, when it all started, these avatars, like how detailed our avatars and everything, didn't exist. It was like these trolley avatars, it was like these the simple avatars that you start out with. A lot of them, that's just how it is. It's, from the beginning, there was never like a lot of super amazing anime looking girl avatars or the e-boy looking avatars they didn't exist until maybe three or four years later mm -hmm. or they started coming out mm -hmm. which i mean everything develops later on and then a lot of people had the mods i mean that was a more recent thing with the ec eac thing mm -hmm. uh yeah, but yeah. before that there was a whole bunch of mods people were able to uh, well, people were colorblind, they had mods to help with that, they had mods to help with mutes, they had mods with, uh, dis with anyone with disabilities. Yeah, there are crashers, but any game will have a crashers. I mean, people are, nowadays are getting past the e EAC to crash people at the same time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you can only put up so some... many walls to, like, you know, like mm -hmm. restrict that sort of thing. Yeah, I, 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 I... 
I suppose I suppose we can we can kind of get into it. I, I've I've talked about EAC with um with other guests in the past. Do you have like do you, I mean it's it's been it's been something on the lines of maybe like four months. Like, it feels like yeah, it's it happened. It was so long ago, but it was like four months since that happened. Do you have any particular thoughts about yeah. that? Did you have any thoughts about that? Has your thoughts changed since then or? Um, well, well, I thought at first it was kind of a pointless thing because I feel like people are going to get around it no matter what. Right. There's going to be... But there, I feel like VR, the mod, not the mods, developers are doing something more about people with disabilities. Like they're putting more on their, their menus for people with blind color blindness. And then... Uh, they a lot of people have go loco on their avatars where they can just move around, sit, whatever they want to do with half bodies, which, which is fine. Um, but I think they're doing better. But I still think the EAC shouldn't have been inputted in either way, because people are gonna get around it anyways. I know they're saying it's because of crashers, but I really don't know really the main reason. Well, no so, one, no one's gonna know the that's main just reason. That's my point of view of it. Yeah, like I, I wanted to get like yeah. your your thoughts on the whole thing. Um, yeah, no one's gonna actually know like the actual like full on you know reason because we're not the devs. So, like we we have yeah. what they gave us and that's all we got. So, yeah, but it's it's nice to hear oh, someone else's thoughts about it. I I'm I'm not gonna get in. I'm not gonna like get too much into like my side of things. I've already kind of talked about that in the past, but it, I just wanted to know like what yeah. were your thoughts about it. But back to you, um, individually. Um, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I like what things do you like to do? Like when you're not on VR chat, like what do you what do you do for fun? What do you what do you like doing? Um, when I'm not in VR chat, I play other games like uh i've been getting into league of legend what yes i know it's a toxic game but i mean i'm having fun yeah, yeah fun, fun <laughs> i've been playing important. overwatch another toxic game <laughs> um other i'm a big simulating game so i love like star loop stardew valley i love um the new dizzy game that came out that's like animal crossing uh let's see what other games have i been into i'm trying to think on top of my head just all different games. I, I'm a gamer, of course, and I'm also in school for cybersecurity. Oh, okay. So um, I do schooling. Mm -hmm. I know some code, of course. I mean, that's kind of 101 with cybersecurity. You got to know a little bit of code. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, uh, I go to the gym every day. Uh, and I eat. <laughs> that's all you get. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not that entertaining. <laughs> uh, no, you're you're plenty you're plenty interesting, and like I I can definitely relate to you know you go to the gym every day. I I work out. I've been very kind of off and on with it the last few months, but I do I do work out. If I don't work out every day, it is like five or six out of the seven days out of the week. I only miss like one day of like a of workout. So Yeah. Yeah. So that's really cool. That's really cool that you, you keep yourself you keep yourself healthy. Like you're you're in school and, you know, you you have things that you enjoy on the side and that's really, really cool. I think that's really interesting. So um as for that, um so you're saying you're doing cybersecurity. What got you into that? uh to be honest i know it's supposed to be really good money and i'm just always i was raised really broke like peanut butter sandwiches for life from, from cheap bread peanut butter sandwich that's your dinner that was your lunch that was your breakfast pretty much uh so i'm just kind of wanting to do better for myself and money wise so i can actually provide myself and whoever i need to provide for like, my mom's always been the most helpful with my life choices, so I want to help for her with provide for her whenever I finish school, get a good job. And I've always been around computers all my life. Like, growing up, I played uh, RuneScape. I yeah. was always on the computer because literally my whole family played RuneScape when I was growing up. Oh, wow. Wow. So it's a family of gamers. <laughs> 
<laughs> yep. Mm. My mom was the one who got at the armor, sold money, got everything. My dad was the one that helped us level up. And then me and my sisters would just do whatever that we wanted. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that sounds like a very, really close-knit family, though. Yeah, we grew up pretty close. Um, me and my dad used to play the Tony Hawk game on the PlayStation. I remember uh, that game. I can't game. remember the whole name of it. But... Tony Hawk's Pro Skater? We played... Mm -hmm. mm hmm We played that nonstop. We play we did competitions with each other and everything. That was our go to game with each other. And then yeah, I just grew up playing video games all my life. <laughs> and haven't been on the computer, so I was like, eh, I'm gonna at least do a career in the computer that I'm always on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It makes sense to kinda of go in that direction, you know, have a line of work that is, you know, at least adjacent to what you've been around for most of your life, which is, you know, games and computers, various kinds of code indirectly because when you play a game, you're, inter you're interfacing with code anyway. So, but um, yeah, cyber yeah. yeah, cybersecurity, I also heard is, can be pretty lucrative. And uh, I've been kind of curious about it and knowing code is also like something I've, I've looked into myself. There was a time where I was, you know, um, I was able to build websites. I was like coding websites and such, but Ooh. yeah, but those days are kind of long gone. I, I haven't been keeping up with, with all the, 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 the languages that you need to do that sort of thing. But Hey, I, I still think it's very, yeah. very cool that, you know, you're getting into that. So like, was, was cybersecurity your first choice? Well, I started out with just computer programming, and then I was like, well, I don't know if I want to just program their whole my whole life. I want to be able to prevent someone hacking my computer or, like, someone doxing a friend, if anything. Like, I want to help people with their computer problems if they ever had one. Mm -hmm. So, I was like, if I want to help someone, at least be able to know with their computers. I'm the more gadgety person in my family help them oh. with their gadgets <laughs> <laughs> very cool very cool oh wow mm -hmm. so uh well mm, i did have a thought leading in like related to that so so your goal ultimately is to well like obviously support your family support yourself make sure that you're you know taking care of yourself and able to take care of yourself and i can 100 percent relate to that um i tell i tell my stream all the time i don't come for money um i i i do have you know a queen like i i consider myself you know queen royalty all those things blah 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 but i don't come for money I mean, hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think it's important to have you know confidence in yourself and all that but yeah i i definitely understand what it's like to you know just be struggling but the fact that you were able to stay close with your family and still have a good family dynamic is very very cool that's very very awesome <laughs> yeah mm. me and my mom are always been really close me and my dad kind of drifted apart after a while but i'm i still talk to him it's just like we're not close close like we used to be Gotcha. But gotcha. me and my mom are super close. I talk to her almost every day. And then me and my little sister, we she lives right, literally right next to me, so we hang out every single day. Oh wow, that's that's so awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we go to the gym uh, together. We go. Eat. Okay. Oh, cool. No, 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 no. Go. No, no. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> No, cut me off any time. Literally, cut me off any time. It's totally okay. <laughs> yeah, so you have a very close relationship with your sister, and you guys, you know, support mm -hmm. each other. That's awesome. Very, very cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hmm. So I suffer with, like, a weight problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. I suffer with a weight problem, and um, she's been helping me out, going, forcing me to go to the gym, trying to be better with my diet anything like that and i mean i've lost inches around my waist it's helped me a whole bunch feeling better which is nice it's always has good to have like a support system when it comes to stuff like that absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> so so that's something you like 
have you always dealt with the uh, dealt with that struggle with uh, with your weight and everything is that something that's you have been dealing with like for your entire life or is it a recent development that you're trying to you know kind of nip in the bud uh i didn't start having that problem till after i graduated high school and i fell down some stairs broke my leg uh, lost a job just went through a whole bunch of stuff at once mm. and it just sent me straight through a depression where i just never got out of it to a point where i just gained a lot and i just felt like there was nothing i could do so i just kept gaining and gaining and gaining and now i'm got to where i am i'm like i need to stop this i need to get myself some help so and that's where that started Hmm. And was it you or your sister that was like, "Hey, let's go to the gym and you know, let's 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 get you back on your feet in a in a way." It, it was definitely my sister. She's always been a gym rat, always been more sporty, athletic. But I, ever since like me and her got, gotten closer, because we and her when we were little, we were never close. We hated each other from. Until she moved in with my dad and I lived with my mom. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we started getting closer. And then she, I lived with her in a trailer. Just me, her, and, I, and our, some friends. We started going to the gym. I started working out with them every day. I lost a whole bunch of weight, but I moved out for a reason. I don't remember why. Mm -hmm. Gained my weight back. And then we started working out again. So I'm starting to lose all that back out. <laughs> mm -hmm. So she's pretty much the biggest support system I have. That's so awesome. Yeah, that that's actually really, really great. I I, I know that many people who, who have that kind of struggle, it's really important to have people to like push you and, and to keep you accountable for those sorts of things. That's so, so wonderful to like have, have your sister and your sister to have, to have you, you know. I'm sure, you know, she yeah. has her own little struggles that maybe you help her with, but... I think that's really, really awesome that you two just, you know, have each other's back. That's cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know some people don't have that kind of relation with their families and stuff like that. Like, me and her both have an older sister that hmm. we don't have any contact with oh. for reasons like, um, sadly, she's a drug user. She's very addicted. Mm. And so we've had to, had to, we had to cut her out of her life because she would literally just steal a whole bunch of stuff from us and sell it for drug money. Yeah. So we just sadly had to cut her out. Mm. Yeah, there's, you know, like families, you know, I think we can all agree no family is perfect. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And like, we're, we're always fortunate to at least have, you know, at least one or two people in our family who we can really connect with. Um, like for me, I'm very oh, similar. Yeah. yeah. In my case, I'm, I'm pretty similar. And I connect with my sister the most, my older sister. So, so like we don't talk every day. She's, you know, she's very, very busy trying to be a doctor and all that stuff. But, um, oh, but that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, very, very, uh, very, very admirable. And uh, and but even though you know I don't get to talk to her every day, you know we we've always gotten along. Like ever ever since like I was like super young, like we've always like just been able to talk to each other very, very, uh, very, very easily. So that's something. Thankfully. We've been able to continue and, you know, so I can definitely relate to like, having that, you know, that little bit of a family, a positive family dynamic, but very, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> so are you like, are you, are you happy with where things are going for you right now? Like in terms of like your, your pursuit to, I, I guess, I guess I should ask like, what is your goal? Like, what is your goal ultimately with, um, you know, going to the gym, losing weight? Like when, when will you be like, like happy? with um or satisfied like happiness is fleeting blah 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 blah. we all know this but but like when will you be satisfied oh, yeah. yeah um i think i'll be satisfied once i can fit into better cosplays i really want to get into cosplay so there's one co cosplay i really want to get into her name's selty from dorara i know i don't know if you ever heard oh, that anime, but... yep i have i'm an i'm an anime watcher <laughs> yeah, i'm so bad <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> But it's one I don't know if a lot of people know Durarara. It's one of my favorites. So it's a great I series. But I it's one it. of those. Uh, 
I, that, I want to cosplay as Selty. She, the this, the yellow helmet and then the black leather bodysuit. Mm, chef kisses. <laughs> Mwah, chef kisses on that one. So it's that's my main sexy. goal to cosplay her. <laughs> it, I feel like I just have too much of a gut to rock the bodysuit. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to rock it. I want to. I want people when they see me. I want their heads to turn like. Damn! <laughs> that meme. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, oh, look over the shoulder type thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That that's my main goal in losing weight so I can look good <laughs> in cosplays. I like that. I I also did. I also had that as a goal as well. I wanted to do a cosplay as um. Who do I want to cosplay? Um, actually, I don't remember the character's name anymore. It's been so long. It's been it was so long ago. But I, my, my goal, <laughs> my goal was to lose weight so that I could cosplay a certain character. So, yeah, I definitely understand that. That makes a lot of hey. sense. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> love that, love that. And it actually works to like have that, have that, like you know, pursuit. But you know, I really hope exactly. That, yeah, to like. You gotta have something driving you, not just, you know, a person holding you accountable, but you gotta have like, something that's actually like, I want to reach this point. You gotta know, like, what you're going for so that you can, you know, keep moving towards that. I think that's important for any goal, really. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Have a wedding coming up, so I'm trying to look good in the dress, the bridesmaid's dress, because, of course, I'm the maid of honor. It's my little sister's wedding. Oh! So, of course, maid of honor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And uh the dress I have, I love it. I look great in it, of course, but I just want to look a little bit slimmer in the stomach just to make my I mean, I have okay. I have big bedonka dinks. I got boobies. Okay. <laughs> fair, I'll fair. just say that. Yeah. <laughs> um I don't want my gut to appear more than my boobies. Right. So <laughs> that is fair. That's I would why want I want that to look too. slimmer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally reasonable. I totally got that. I do not. Yeah. <laughs> I do not have. <laughs> I'm pretty small. <laughs> All things considered, but. <laughs> You're gorgeous no matter what, anyways. Oh. Boobies are not. You're gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you and you know you you as a person i i find you lovely and gorgeous as well so i'm sure that i would find you quite attractive oh my heart <laughs> girl when, when, when are we going on this date wait a second when are we going on this date <laughs> oh gosh yeah, we we might we might have to we, 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 we just might have oh. to, but you know, that's, we, we're not going to let that. You guys will never know. You'll never know. No, you gotta, you gotta, that's, uh, that's premium stuff. You gotta subscribe. <laughs> oh gosh. So, so like, so something for something completely different. Why did you choose the name galaxies here? So, um, I've always went by Galaxy Trip. Um, that name was taken, surprisingly, through VR chat. I don't know. Whoever has Galaxy Trip, I, I, I'm fighting you. We are fighting. <laughs> but, so, I was started as Beautiful Galaxy. I was like, you know, this seems very egotistic. I don't know if I want to keep this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I didn't come up with a <laughs> I was like, oh, how much I oh, I think I am beautiful. Yeah, I'm I'm down I'm down. Think I'm beautiful. I'm the queen. I got I got this shit down. But I don't want everyone to be like, yeah, that bitch is egotistic. Right. <laughs> I'm right. good. I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. So, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go with galaxy. And I this is kind of what sprung up in my head at the time when I was changing it. So, yeah, like I so I'm just here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the the name the name definitely strikes me as like like it's it's I wouldn't say it's not egotistical, but it's definitely the kind of thing that just like it says like you're glad to be alive and everything that comes along with that is is it is what it is. But it's almost like hey, I'm like 
accept me as I am. This is what this is what I'm like. This is who I'm about. And you know, I'm here. If you're not here for it, then you know, that's too bad. So like it, that's the kind of vibe it, give, it gives to me. So it's like it's kind of like saying it's not again it's not egotistical, but it's like saying that like yeah, acknowledge me. I am here. And if you're not here for it, that's okay. I mean, I never thought about that, but you know what? I love it. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We'll go with that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have this very bad habit of looking for meanings and connecting the dots in everything, and I, I like to just kind of understand people a little bit better. So it leads me to kind of, you know, like why would someone come up with that name? And then I kind of like maybe I analyze it. I, I, have a, I have a tendency to analyze things a lot. So that's why I'm a pod. That's why I made a podcast. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm with it. You know, if anyone ever asks me again, that's why I'm going to go with the answer because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love the name. I think Galaxy is it's a pretty, pretty awesome name. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. I. I, I, I like I like it very very much. Um, that was one of the first things that I, I noticed about you. Um, love the name. It's my awesome username. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, like I you know oh, I okay. So so my whole thing I've always whenever it comes to like video games and usernames that people come up with I've always I've always like semi judged people based on their ability to be creative with their usernames. So like, yeah, I guess it's, yeah, yes. Yeah. I've been a bit judgy, but you know, it's always like, it's like, okay, is this person creative? Does this person have a creative mind? Does this person, is this person just a straight up weeb or whatever? Like you're just taking, like, you're just being like, uh, you're like a um, jujitsu, jujitsu, Naruto, jujitsu, Uzumaki, you know, just like, you know, like, it's just like. <laughs> Like, I, I, are you actually creative? Do you, are you thinking? Um, and like, I, I like... Just call yourself weeb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might as well have weeb, like, like, plastered as your name. You might as well. Like, if you're gonna call yourself, like, um, a conglomeration of anime names. And I, I and I, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. I used to do something similar to that back in the day. But I figured out real fast, real fast, that, like, it makes sense to have your own unique identity. Having your own unique creative handle, I think, says a lot about the person. And I think it's it's also really, really... It's also, like, I think it's a great, like, icebreaker to, like, you know, ask someone, like, oh, like, where'd you get your username from? Like, what inspired you to have that name? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I've always just kind of looked at that sort of thing, like, for years. I've always kind of looked at that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all to say. Well, that my other yours. username is a. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my other username is a Galaxy Trip, mm -hmm. which I come up with that because I love galaxies. I've always loved stars. looking up at the stars ever since I was little. Mm -hmm. And then Trip, I it's part of my last name, so I just kind of put those two together. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, that that's cool. I like that. I like that you have yeah you have mm -hmm. an aspect of like whatever you enjoy, and then you have an aspect of something that's a little bit real, a little bit more grounded, and it, it it's it's uniquely yours. Yeah. So that's really cool. <laughs> Which is surprising. There's other people named Galaxy Trip, and I've never. I was like. Well, I've never seen people with that name, so what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy how many people there are in the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was surprised. Exactly. Yeah, I was surprised that Nefertiti wasn't taken. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, and you're like the second person that goes by Nef. So, mm -hmm. I know Fifi, there's another one that hangs around Species Group. I don't remember their name. I just know they have Nef in their name, too. And I'm like, huh. This is weird. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And like, it's because of that, like, the, the more I've interacted with more people from various communities lately, the more I have to like, perhaps like for some people, I now have a nickname because that person knows a Nef already. <laughs> and it's like, there's like a Nepi, there's like Nepi, and there is also someone else just named Nef in general. Um, well, not it's like yeah. it's, it's a longer name, but it's shortened to Neff. So I've just been given like a nickname in in some cases. So you know, 
<laughs> you gotta be the nickname person. Yeah, because I was I was last. I came into the picture last, you know. It is what it is. <laughs> oh, sweetie, you'll always be first for me. Oh gosh, you know. Here she goes, here she goes again. <laughs> Flattering me, stroking my I ego. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. I gotta stroke it since I'm not allowed to have my ego. I don't have beautiful galaxy anymore. I gotta be, I gotta give someone else my ego. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you, you are very much appreciate, very, I very much appreciate that. Why can't I fucking speak? Your avatar is too pretty, apparently. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> uh, you're making me blush. Oh, uh, doesn't get hot in here or is it just you? <laughs> oh, it's it's just me, hon. It is it is just me. <laughs> but also yeah, you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> also you. Because I'm also sweating to be to be quite honest with you, I'm also sweating, which is crazy because it's like almost winter. Oh me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm painting myself like a <laughs> yeah. you know, it, 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 it just kinda happens that way. Uh, so um let's let's see. This, let me see. I, I had a thought. Let me think. Is there? Oh, there goes oh. my alarm. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, my alarm went off. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Um, so I guess, like, what do you enjoy most about VR chat? I know you've kind of talked about this earlier with, um, just like enjoying like the aspect of making friends and everything like that but is there anything that um that you know keeps you coming back is it just the people um is it the the creativity is it you know i know you, you talked about social anxiety as well so like i guess what is it about vr chat that makes it you know worth coming back to and um something that you uh you know enjoy uh, I've been enjoying the world, like the worlds here lately. A lot of new people have been creating worlds, and they've been absolutely gorgeous. Like a lot of people have gotten into details with their worlds. Like there's one that's all about planets exploding. There's one that's all just particles, fireworks, all kinds of different, just gorgeous worlds. You can just sit there and relax and look at it, and something different will happen. No matter how long you're sitting there, something you'll see something different. You'll be like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's really cool. And there's escape rooms. There's a whole bunch of games now. Back when it first started, there wasn't that many stuff. Like, there's only a certain amount of worlds that were here. A certain amount of games. Um, not a lot of Avatar worlds yet, of course. And it was just all about community back then. Is all about talking to people, being in public worlds, dealing with trolls all the time, dealing with kids. I mean, not as many kids as it was but now, but there was still a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been enjoying a lot of the new worlds I've been coming out lately. Hmm. I see, I see. So, so you're kind of like a, a world explorer? You come, you come to VR chat yeah. to uh, to see what what new stuff people have created. Mm -hmm. And is that like the main reason? Oh, go ahead. Oh no, uh, I mean I've been enjoying uh, some people with avatar. I've been going on avatar worlds and checking out new avatars. Of course, there's been a lot of people showing off their work, and it's been absolutely gorgeous. Like mm -hmm. the avatar I now, I've seen. It was one thing I found on Gumroad, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. I dumped. That's why I downloaded it today. <laughs> yeah, totally makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, just uh, I guess the create yeah the creative aspect of VR chat seems to really kind of draw people in, and like is that what you're usually uh, is that what you're usually usually doing when you uh, hop into VR chat, or are you like usually hanging out with people? or exploring new worlds or stuff like that? It's a mixture of both. Like if I see a friend online that I haven't seen in a while, I'll get on VR chat and so go see, hey, how you been, catch up with them. And sometimes we'll just go world hopping and I'll be like, yeah, oh, let's check out this world. This world looks really cool. And then we'll just go explore it. It's really fun to explore with friends, of course, cause you see things together. It's like going on a road trip with someone in real life. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I've been enjoying. 
Mm, mm. Very cool, very cool. And is there anything that you you don't particularly care for regard regarding VR chat? Just something like you just don't really vibe with regarding VR chat? Um, with VR chat, there's like I said from the start, there's some really creepy people. There's some like I've seen people that are pedophiles. There's been people that were like uh, trolls. There's crashers. There's people who are just terrible people that should not be on the web. I think, like, um, I have an ex-boyfriend. Yeah, an ex-boyfriend that I don't care for anymore. He it was just a terrible person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he was saying perverted stuff to like a fifteen-year-old, and I was not all about it. I I blocked him. I I'm not doing anything with him. But it's just it's sick how people can be. And he was in his twenties. I. Uh, that was a no-go for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's the thing about VR chat. There's always going to be people like that in public worlds. And then there's always the trolls in public worlds. Like, and there's kids. That's the only thing. There, sometimes it brings the wrong community out. But it just depends if you can find the right community to hang out with and enjoy them being around. Yeah, there's always going to be some kind of drama. But if you get past the drama and you can stay friends, then that's worth staying with that community yeah yeah I, I totally agree with that like do you have a do you have a community that you can see yourself a part of like um like i personally have been i'm i have always been very much kind of solo in a lot of ways throughout my life like i i spent a good portion of my life pretty pretty solo in terms of just not really being a part of a community because i've always kind of felt like i'm too I'm too weird or I'm too analytical for some people and I, I think it's very hard to find people who I can actually relate to because so many people like to keep things just on the surface. I don't like small talk. I, I can do it but I don't care for it. So like it's very hard for me yeah. personally to like get in, involved in the community and but lately like I've, I've kind of felt like lately you know with my streams I felt like maybe little by little I'm growing a community that way and even just you know hanging out with um with Fifi and and like his his people um that's one thing and then like I and then you know I'm a part of like a, a like a streamer crew thing and that's really cool so like little by little I've like found ways to like be a part of various communities despite me really sucking at that sort of thing so I do you do you uh, has it been easy for you to find a community and like like how I guess I guess how has that been for you what communities what community or communities do you prefer um at first it was hard for me to find a community because like I said it has social anxiety so talking to people more than I'm used to it was always been a problem for me um I always feel like Oh, I'm boring. Oh, I'm weird, too weird for him. Oh, I'm this, I'm that for him. I should just go away. So I always end up leaving communities. But with Beefy's community, I feel like everyone's a weirdo. I mean, <laughs> Beefy's a fucking weirdo. Yeah, the, the um, leader is a weirdo. I'm now modding for you him. Know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He made me a mod for his Twitch. I don't know why he did that but <laughs> um but I just feel more included with his community it's just been it's a whole community of weirdos and I feel like I'm part of it which has been really nice mm -hmm. um I've been a part of another community I've been friends with some VR chat for over a year which has been nice um I'm part of my sister's community which she doesn't play VR chat of course but with her little gaming friends because she's obsessed with Among Us and that's how she met her fiance. In Among Us? Among Us. What? <laughs> yes, through Among Us. That's crazy. <laughs> how, wait, how could you I ever? Know. It's like Among Us VR. Well, obviously, obviously <laughs> so it was she... Among Us VR. It was regular Among Us. <laughs> no, yeah. it was regular Among Us. Mm. Um, she started a server that's just all about Among Us. And um, she met people from Reddit. She made a post from Reddit like, hey, I want people to play Among Us. And that's how it happened. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was one of the ones that joined. And now they're getting married in March. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, how long ago was that? Uh, I want to say about three years ago. Huh. Wow. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should play Among Us. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, you're really <laughs> sussy now. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sussy enough as it is. But eventually I'll have to play some Among Us. Probably Among Us VR or something. We'll have to like do that on stream or something like that. But that's really interesting. Oh yeah, we'll definitely have to play. For sure, for sure. <laughs> I'm down to play some Among Us together. We'll be, we'll, we'll be sussy together. Cool, cool. <laughs> I love the sound of that. And I'm also, like, I'm, I'm not very... I mean, I can, I can... I can lie, but I'm like, Among Us has always been kind of like, it's been interesting, but it's always kind of complicated for me to like, understand like, how the game actually works, but I think I understand it now, little by little, but, you know, yeah. Among Us can be a lot of fun, is what I'm trying to say, but I've never played it with like, a bunch of people that I know, so, it would be nice to do that. Well, they have Among Us, they have Among Us on VR chat, you can get a group together. Oh, okay, okay, oh. I, I knew there was Among Us VR, like, as a standalone, but if it's already in VR, you know, same thing with Beat Saber, like, you, there's Beat Saber in, in VR chat, too, which is crazy. It's nuts. But, I love uh, Beat Saber. Oh, really? Really? You, uh, you play mm-hmm. a lot? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not as much as I want to, but I play some. Cool, cool. I, I have, <laughs> I have not played enough. Like, I, uh... I need to, like, I love rhythm games, which is, you know, I love them, mm-hmm. um, but I would definitely like to uh, to play more of that. That's, that's definitely a game I want to play also. Um, but yeah, so, so you have communities that you feel like you're a part of, which is great, and, you know, you, you wouldn't, in, like, you don't strike me as someone who suffers from social anxiety, so can you tell us, well, tell, tell me about a little bit how you kind of, I guess, found a way to overcome that, or if you're still dealing with it, how how do you deal with that? Because you've always seemed very, very bright and, you know, you know, approachable and everything, so I'm curious. Oh, my heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, of course, I deal with very much social anxiety in real life. I'm a very, too, surprisingly, I'm a very quiet person in real life. Same. I, I, <laughs> I am, um, I mostly stay at home, of course, until my sister makes me go out to go to the gym or go do something. I'm a very much of an introvert. I can't handle being in big crowds. I'm the same way in VR chat. I can't handle being in big crowds and worlds. Um, when I am in brown, like, if I get surrounded by people, I will go on major panic attack, and I just need to get away from my headset mm-hmm. and get, like, a breather, because I will definitely feel, like, overcrowded and not able to breathe. Okay, okay. Um, and definitely, like, a lot of voices at once, it kind of freaks me out a little bit. Mm. It's like actually being in a, like a concert, which I used to love to go. I used to love to go to concerts, but now it's just gotten worse. I guess the older I'm getting, the more social anxiety I'm getting, which is weird, but... <laughs> Interesting. Because I used to go to concerts when I was like a teenager, and I used to like... I used to crowd surf, which is the most <laughs> craziest thing yeah. ever. I used to fucking crowd surf. And but, um, did, anything, did anything happen to cause you to like... I guess, what causes, does anything cause social anxiety? Did something happen? Um, when I, I guess it started out when I was younger and I had the cops call on me for no reason. I was in a store with an ex-boyfriend and I picked up something and put it back down. I didn't put it in the place that it was before because sometimes you just don't do that. You're like, I don't want to go all the way to the other side of the store and put it back. And, uh, the manager called the cops on me saying I stole it. So, ever since, it's like, everywhere I go, I feel like someone's watching me. Someone's, like, going to call the cops on me for no reason whatsoever. I don't know why that caused me so much trauma, but I guess it was just because I was young and dumb. Mm -hmm. And ever since, it's just, like, going to stores thinking, like, someone's watching me or someone going to a store by myself. 
I just go into a small panic attack as I'm standing there walking around. I see, I see. And that just kind of started my social anxiety and just got up from la layers from that, I guess. <laughs> and that was that was during the time where you were crowd surfing and going to concerts and all that. Uh, that was bef that was after all that actually. Hmm. Hmm. So, you... so that happened literally right after. Okay. So you were so were you still going to them? Did you stop going to concerts after that? I stopped going to concerts after that. <laughs> I see. I see. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. It's. It really is a bummer how like how how trauma works. Like it's not something we can really control. Mm -hmm. All we can really do is manage it. Like to the best of our ability. Yeah. Oh yeah. So so how are you okay so in that case so would you say your social anxiety is mainly geared towards being in crowds not so much talking to people these days um i would say mostly yeah mostly crowds nowadays it's like me and you talking this is perfectly fine it's mostly like if a lot of people are trying to talk to me at once or if I'm just surrounded by people and I just go full panic mode. Mm -hmm. So, like, talking like me and you, this is perfectly fine. Unless I'm like, I don't know what to say, then I go in a small panic mode. But, yeah. We're not gonna go in that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'm, uh, I'm pretty good at guiding the conversation, so you don't need to feel pressured if, you know, you run out of, run out of thoughts or things to say. So, no. You're fine. <laughs> Yeah, you hit that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. So my. Th well, like I'm in a therapy session now. <laughs> I mean, like that's kind of what my podcast, kind of, sort of, like low key is. Like, for I feel like a lot of people don't really have a chance to have like conversations, like really like one on one meaningful conversations with one another because there's like there's so many things that are surrounding us, stimulating our attention and. And just distracting us that I feel like in VR chat a lot of people don't typically have the opportunity to really kind of get deeper into the conversation or like to to really like have like a, an honest to goodness like conversation where we're asking each other questions about like you know things maybe that kind of th that blur into real life things that are related to VR chat but maybe not that maybe even get a little bit personal yeah. at times so like I like to have conversations with people like I am also an introvert but I'm also very good at being extroverted so like I've taught myself how to like be extroverted but yeah but basically it's funny that you say it is it feels like a kind of a, like a therapy session because in a lot of ways I feel like this can be therapy for a lot of people and again I like to analyze things so you know as long as you feel comfortable um, I'm I'm glad that that's the case. Oh, I'm all good, hon. Okay, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So, I've wondered, I've like, I wondered this about your voice. I know I'm like pointing at you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I have a southern accent. <laughs> it's adorable, by the way. <laughs> I, I I'm, I'm raised in the south. I was I raised on Livermush. Uh, cornbread all that good <laughs> country meals very cool very cool uh, not happy about it sometimes it'll come out like sometimes i'm good at hiding it sometimes it'll just come out straight out whenever <laughs> not paying attention <laughs> <laughs> well you don't have to worry about it you know i i think it's i think it's charming i think the accent's very very charming. i've always found the southern accent accent very charming very it's like it's you feel like you can talk to Southern people, like they're like kind of easier to like talk to and interact with. They they feel so like they're like so relaxed, because you know the way they <laughs> they carry themselves. It's very kind of relaxed and, and chill. So, so yeah, I have I noticed try to be that. Relaxed and chilled. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I I I I wanted you to like you know share like where where are you where are you hail from and the South is a is a pretty good answer you know we don't have to like, we don't have to go further yeah. than that for sure. I usually never like have like a like a a lull, but you know, let's just let's jump into the personal stuff. Why not? Let's let's jump into that. 
it's, oh no <laughs> it's been it's <laughs> it, it's been it's it's been a good bit of time so we can uh we can dig into that if you don't mind <laughs> yeah <laughs> you guys are still listening you get to hear my personal life now yeah exciting right <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> I missed my chair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so, what, I guess, how, I guess, well, okay, let's start with, what are your pronouns? So, I go by she, her. I never really saw myself as anything else. Uh, I mean, I've, I've always wore like guyish clothes and stuff like that but i've never seen myself as he him or they them it's mostly just he her or she her mm -hmm. <laughs> for me at least and that's totally fine there's really like you don't need to even justify that like yeah <laughs> like it's uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah you are who you are like regardless no no need yeah yeah so um no need for all the details <laughs> right 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 so so but what is your what are your what is your preference in terms of your what are you what are you sexually attracted to? Um, so I am pan. I love no matter what. If you are trans, if you are he, you are she, you are they them. I will. If you make my heart flutter, then I am into you pretty much. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. There was a time where I was also pan, but that is, uh, I have since realized that I'm, I'm largely just bisexual, largely, but mm -hmm. you know, you know, it is what it is. You know, you figure yourself out, you, you come to understand yourself better and, uh, yeah, I think that's great. And yeah, bringing their sexuality up. A lot of people in VR chat discover their sexuality through VR chat. That's why I've noticed. Like, yeah, I know plenty of people who've discovered their sexuality through just VR chat. Just chatting with people who are different. They're like, "Wow, I feel the same way. Maybe I'm this way." And that's when they discover themselves. Yeah, yeah. It's it's literally just like real life. Except <laughs> not, yeah. but like like the, the the interactions are genuine. But like it's it's like an opportunity for people to have interactions with a wide with a like a wide selection of people, and that allows people to like interact with people who they wouldn't have interacted with before, or and like figure things out that they wouldn't have figured out before. And that's that's really the beauty of of VR chat. That's one of the really things that I genuinely really like about VR chat. Just there's so many fascinating people um, that that uses pl this, that uses exactly. platform. So yeah, have you been in many relationships? Have you like have like I guess throughout your life, have you like been frequently dating, or is it, like a recent thing? Uh, well, throughout my life, I've been dating on and off with other people. Um, my longest relationship being three years, but that ended up really bad. He cheated on me. He was very abusive. Um, he slammed my arm in a fridge, he threw a controller at me, um, he showed up at my house at 3 in the morning trying to beat my door down, trying to get back with me, and I had to call the cops on him multiple times, um, and it, that's just how it is with him. That was when I was young and dumb, I thought I loved the guy, it turned out he was just horrible for me. Mm -hmm. And then ever since, I just was on and off with a whole bunch of people, being cheated on, being told that wasn't good enough, um, just on and off made me not want to be in relationships anymore. I haven't been in a relationship in over a year, and this new relationship just started maybe two months ago, which is nice. Yeah. Um... VR chat has opened me up a lot. To meet new people. Yeah. Other than that, then. My dating life hasn't always been the best for me. But. It's getting better, I think. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like it. Like, it's, uh. It's yeah. Very, it's always very, very rare to, like, find people who, like. Who like you for you and are willing to, like, put up with your flaws and everything. So, like, to find someone who's, like. Who genuinely seems like they could be really, really good for you is 
definitely hard to find. And I guess there, oh, yeah. yeah, there's definitely a benefit to like being in VR chat because at least you have a, you have the opportunity to meet people you wouldn't have met otherwise, and that in and of itself is pretty cool. I I think especially like for someone like me whose day life has also have not been very good. Um, so it's it's very much kind of a thing that you know, being willing to just interact with people and talk to people and get to know them. Yeah, I kind of been seeing like all these really, like they'll start out as like the first week they're like, oh yeah, I really care about you, and then they are very selfish in how they are, like. I can just tell if they're genuine how they feel or they're just trying to get me in their bed. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people who who generally just, you know, that's ultimately their goal. They just kind of want to, they want to hook up and that's really it. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's... Yeah, I already went to my whole face. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not. <laughs> I'm tired of being in a whole face. <laughs> yeah, it's you know you, you gotta you gotta go through it. You gotta figure yourself out and figure out what you actually want and everything. So, you know, I I didn't have a whole phase, but I certainly am kind of in the midst of just you know being surrounded by people who uh, who uh, want to hook up with me. Um, but that's really it. Um, I mean. <laughs> You are very good, Logan. <laughs> oh my gosh, please. <laughs> but, but yeah, you, you know, I, 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 I don't, like, again, I don't blame them for wanting that. And, you know, honestly, it's very much a, uh, <laughs> it's very much a, a, a thing that I've, I've kind of accepted. But at the end of the day, like, it really would be nice to find somebody who is, like, genuinely wants to, like, just spend time with me and you know also like want to like do this do the stuff like the fun stuff enjoy yeah so I spend time with you and spend and time, time with, with you, you. Yeah. <laughs> yes exactly yeah exactly so like it's it's really not every day that you know someone finds someone who genuinely they feel like they can connect with and you know feel like they can you know build something with and yeah, I can, that's something I'm, I'm definitely kind of interested in, uh, like, that whole idea, the whole concept. But, you know, you know, I will just be, you yeah. know, giving you head pats and, you know, cheering you on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my heart. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. I, I have a place for you in my heart, Katie. Oh, <laughs> I like to hear that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know. And welcome back to our stream. Back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the temptation is so strong to flirt, but we're we're in the middle of a podcast. But, you know. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> That's Watch our streams, you'll see more flirting there. <laughs> true, true. So, so I guess like I guess what uh, what okay what would you say you look for in like in like in general like what what do you what do you what matters most to you when it comes to like someone who is like who who you would potentially like see as a, a partner Um for me I I feel like I need someone who is supportive someone who keep me on my track for sure because i mean i suffer a severe depression and anxiety of course and it's the fact that if someone keeps me on my track someone's there to support me i feel like i can stay on my track i can stay where i want reach my goals with that person also love someone with a good humor i would love to laugh so i want someone who can make me laugh if you're gonna especially with dad jokes i freaking <laughs> love dad, dad jokes. jokes i've been posting Yes. Oh, I'll I've seen. I've seen. I've seen, but, no, uh, I've seen your dad jokes. I've seen them posted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I love my dad jokes. They're cheesy. I love them. Um, someone who's, of course, had. I don't have. I have an issue where I don't have much of a sex drive. So someone who's okay with me, not wanting to be, intercoursed, in like. Not every day of the week, maybe once a week, maybe once every two weeks. It 
I'm I love cuddles. I love being cuddled. I'm a cuddler. Mm -hmm. And but it's just I'm not like crazy about sexual intercourse and stuff like that. It's just I want a emotional like emotional romantic connection with that person. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be sexual. Just I just want to have someone there who supports me, who loves me for no matter what and will be there by my side. And someone who, no, I don't want someone who has no goals in their life. I want someone who, who has goals for in their lives too. Not just be like, I'm gonna support you and your goals, but I don't want any myself. Yeah. I want someone to have their goals. I want to be able to support someone too. That's a big one for me. I want, yeah. And that's just how I see a relationship. It needs to be an even relationship too. Someone who can be even. If both were inside and out. Mm -hmm, mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of what I see. Cool. Or cool. that's what I look for, at least. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely relate to all of those points. Like, literally, practically all of them are ones that I also care about. So, that's really, really cool. Uh, like, it's very much something that I think is very important. I think people need to have more... I guess, I wouldn't say high standards, but have a standard. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. ha have a standard. Um, do, do do looks matter to you? Is that something that that th that you care um, about? To a point. If I really have, like, care about your personality and really, like, how we vibe, then it looks don't matter. Um, but I do want to be attracted to that person. I do want to look at him and be like, wow, I actually really attracted to him. And mm -hmm. if it's through personality, if that's how I'm feeling through personality, that's how I feel. If it's through their looks, then that's how I feel. But to me, if you have a really good personality, if you're so caring and genuine from who you are, then I will fall in love with you. My heart will skip beats. If you're going to come at me, act genuine, but you're really not, I'm going to just block, deny, go away, get away from me. I, I just can't vibe with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, having that, like, that empath, like, ability, like, being able to just kind of know right out of the gate, like, whether you, like, you like someone or someone is genuine or not, like, that is... Like, that's, it kind of sucks to be able to, like, sense that. <laughs> um, it, it's good, oh, yeah, and, it it's good so and bad. bad. Yeah, because, like, you want to, like, like you want to be able to, like, vibe with everybody. But, like, you just kind of have a sense that, like, this person is probably just not good for me. And I probably shouldn't stay around them all that much or interact with them all that much. And, like, you just kind of know. And, like, I can, yeah. I have had that for a very long time. And I'm sure you have too. It's very much like, it's useful, but it really does kind of suck in a lot of ways when you're trying to like really oh, you know, yeah. be friendly with people and, and you're interacting with large groups and then like one of the people <laughs> you just kind of feel that way about. Oh, type of yes. Thing. Yeah. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. Especially yeah. you're like, oh, vibing with everyone else and then it's that one person. You're just like, I really just want you to go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's oh god, that that really is the worst for sure. But thankfully, thankfully, you know, I'm able like I've I've just had really I've gotten to know really really, really great people. It seems like you have too. Like we talked about communities earlier, like we're both a part of Fifi's community and, you know, I I I don't like I have a community, but it's not really like a community yet. <laughs> Um, like kind of it's not yeah. really formalized per se but like I mean, every time I go live you know there's like, there's the people familiar faces and everything which is really always really really nice oh yeah but we I, have Philo we have Theory <laughs> yeah like and those are all the people that are part of the the crew that I'm uh, the streamer crew that I'm that I'm involved in so like they're they're like my the, my they're like the people I look to and rely on and always hang out with so yeah 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 I mean, I would have met you if uh, Fila and Barry were hanging out with you, so... <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. And, like, I, I actually was really, really interested in, like, getting to know, like, a lot of people from Fifi's community. Like, my, my, my personal goal was to 
interact more with like what Fifi was up to because it seemed like a lot of people in his community were interesting. And, you know, I always have like lurked in his streams, especially during the rave streams. And I'm like, you know, I should just go. I should just, like, lo I just log in and go. And, you know, thankfully, like, thankfully I've, I've had a, a way of like getting to know you and getting to know, um, just uh, many other people from Fifi's community in general. And that's been really, really cool. Like I, I want to have, I want to have like red on the podcast. Like I 100% want him on the podcast. Oh yeah. Red's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a good dude. Definitely call him a good boy a lot. Oh yeah. I've already done he that. He, <laughs> he, <laughs> he'll fold. He yep. folds. <laughs> he, he, he folded. He folded for me. I saw him fold for you that one time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very mm. fun. <laughs> good time. He's adorable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's I was like, you have to get the mommy voice out for sure. <laughs> Oh gosh, but yeah, there are so many people I, I would like to have on the podcast, and just many many of those people are from Fifi's community. So like, I I just I felt like I wanted to feel more integrated, not just with Fifi, but with the people that care about him. So I mean, it's oh yeah, it's kind of worked out really really well, and I've had a chance to like you know meet you because you know Philo invited you that one time. Like um like uh Galaxy and I met. In a, in a shooting range, um, Philo and I were hanging out. <laughs> I know it's, like, it's it's not a very common place to like you know meet meet an attractive an attractive lady. So it's not very common, but you know it worked out that way. You know, so picking up girls <laughs> in the gun road and the gun shooting guns. Yeah, you know we 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 ended up meeting each other in that in that world and uh, Galaxy opened the door. You know, threw out a, a little gentle flirtation. I'm like. All right, we're done. We're done. It's over. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's yep. How I folded her. Yep. Game. Game <laughs> over. Actually, no, not game over. Actually, more like game on. Um. <laughs> yeah. The start. Start yeah. pressing the start button now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that that was that was really really nice. Um, cause like I I wanted to talk to you more, like, <clears throat> like the when I met you, like, come closer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want I well okay. I I want you in frame but <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I, I know I ran out of frame. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. But um I thought we we're going for a romantic kind of thing. <laughs> I, I mean that's okay too. I mean that that is okay too. But <laughs> after the podcast in her streams guys in her streams. <laughs> I mean, just, well, you know, like, b by the time this comes out, like, the stream that we were hanging out with, hanging out in recently, that will be, like, old by the time this comes out, but whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like, I, I wanted to, like, I, I, I had a good feeling about you, but I also am just, I'm the kind of person who, I'm very, very hesitant to, like, say certain things or to, or, or just to kind of, like, like, I don't want to force myself on a person. And, like, I, I I really aim to have, like, a good first impression. So, like, you know, you were invited. And, like, I'm like, that's great. Great. I'm I'm happy to meet someone new from Fifi's community. And, you know, you walk in in, in your, your classic avatar. And, you know, we hang out. We shoot guns. Um, I try to, like, I try to talk you up here and there. And uh, like I wasn't like I wasn't really sure like what you thought or what you thought about me, but I'm like oh like I've seen your name in uh, in the Discord and everything, and I wanted to get to know you. So, um, thankfully, thankfully, you know, we were able to kind of like you know, <laughs> like break the ice as we open that damn door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is fantastic. And from then on, I'm just like yeah, yeah, I. Uh, I think this person's really, really cool, really, really sweet, and very attractive. So, like, it all just kind of came together. Oh, my heart. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Like, how, how, what did you think Honey, about we me? We didn't break the ice. We destroyed That's, that ice. <laughs> that is, oh, that, that is true. That's true. That ice was, it was broken, melted, and then evaporated with all of the heat that we are creating. Yeah. Oh, Connie, we create too much heat. We, 
That's why we sweating. <laughs> I know, I know, you know. They they say they say cats and dogs can't uh, can't coexist. But they haven't met us. Um, we we proved them wrong. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> you ever heard of the cartoon cat dog? That's I us have. right there. Yeah. <laughs> very very close, well connected, and uh, you know a little bit silly at times. You know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So like, what what did, uh, what did you think about me? Like when you like when we first met? Oh, okay. So I lo watched the podcast with you and Fifi before we met, mm -hmm. and so I already caught a little bit of vibe of you. I was like, okay, I really like her personality. I really like her voice. So I was like, okay, when I meet her, I'm gonna try to get to know her more. So I thought first time I'm thinking about you, I. Well, not just, well, thinking about you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I loved your voice, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I loved how you, you seemed mature and calm. So I was like, okay, I can vibe. I, I, I don't mind. And then I I, I felt the flirty vibe. I, empath of me, I said, your flirty vibe. I'm like, okay, this girl, this girl going to flirt. I'm going to have to flirt with this woman right here, right now. <laughs> And that's when we broke the ice. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. No, not broke the ice. We melt. We shattered that shattered, ice. <laughs> shattered, melted, evaporated. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. It was. Mm -hmm. It was great. Like it, the moment, the moment you did that, I'm like, yep. All right, cool. We're good. We're good. It's great. And uh, I, I was start button. <laughs> yeah, I was no longer like worried about it or anything. Everything just kind of really just it really just hit. Like I wasn't sure if you were like interested in like like shooting guns or just like joking around so i was kind of like i was like i was just trying to feel you out because you you had you had seen me you'd seen what i'm like but i didn't have a clue about like like what you were like yeah so you know i heard your voice i'm like that's a nice voice um so um so like i kind of just went from there and you know just you know you know and just kind of came together which is really really surprising but also it's always surprising when like you meet somebody who like actually just you just vibe with and connect with like i love that feeling just like you know oh you, yeah yeah just you meet someone and it just it just kind of instantly clicks. connect yeah that's why we're the cat dog we just instantly connect true 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 <laughs> and uh i i just i absolutely had to have you on the podcast so um like i i'm very very glad that you decided to come on but we're not done we're not done no okay <laughs> so i can't run away oh gosh oh gosh no, nope you can't <sighs> you can't run nope no no uh and there's no escape oh don't worry i'm not running for me i'm just ready to take you to the bedroom i mean what uh <laughs> don't don't worry about that guys you didn't hear anything you heard nothing you heard nothing <laughs> you heard nothing <laughs> <laughs> So, so I, I'm, I'm actually very curious to know, like, has there been anything in, in your life that has particularly like shaped you, shaped your personality and I guess made you into, uh, I guess the person you are today? Like, like, have you gone through just something that has been like particularly like difficult that you've overcome and you've, that you're now a better person for it? Um... I did have something tragic happen to me a couple years ago. Um, I was threatened by my stepdad. Oh. He was going to kill me with a not with this knife he had. Um, he was super drunk. He caused a lot of chaoticness in my life for like a whole month. My mom still is with him. I hate to say that. My mom is still with him. Mm. But he threatened me. He threatened her. Tried to kill her. Um, had to call the cops on him. They never did anything. They did a wellness check. Didn't do anything for him. They didn't take him to jail or anything. Yeah. Um, had to sleep in a car for four or five days. Because I had nowhere else to go. He was in the house that I was sleeping in. That I was sleeping in. He threatened to go to the place where my mom and me were staying. Uh, we literally drove seven or eight hours away from him just to get away. Um, 
he finally was put into a mental hospital for his alcohol. And apparently he's sober now. He hasn't drank it in like two years, which is good, but I don't trust him whatsoever. But ever since I've suffered with PTSD with that situation, mm -hmm. I that was another reason why I can't really trust men. I had like an issue trusting men because of that, because I thought of him as a father figure almost for me. Mm -hmm. Like he was really good to me and my mom for a while until he got super drunk and he just kind of ruined everything. Um, he has caused me and my mom a whole bunch of problems. He's still causing my mom a whole bunch of problems, but she's scared if she tries to leave him, he's just going to try. He's just going to kill her. So that's just a big issue going on. Um, hmm. but. For that reason, I lived with my mom for a while. Now that I'm I'm living by myself, I have my cat, my therapy cat, pretty much. Uh, I'm super close to my sister. I still spend every day with my sister now. Like before, I never really spent in much time with her. Me and her spent every day together. Um, I just feel like I've grown more stronger independently. Than I was before. Because mm -hmm. I can't trust anyone. <laughs> yeah. Or couldn't trust anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can definitely see how that 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 would definitely like cause like a lot of like trauma, like PTSD from that kind of experience. Like, and being able to be able to actually like trust people in general is hard um that that's just a common yeah. thing that's an extremely common thing just in general like the fact that we as humans are able to connect with people and trust them to be decent and not out of their out of their gourd like just just be decent people that trust is not easy and and when people mm -hmm. like totally like destroy that like shatter that 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 the whole aspect of what that means and what that can be the whole the possibility of even trusting anyone is so it becomes so much harder because we're always taking risks like literally every time we have any interaction we're taking a risk and who knows what's going to happen about it like who who knows where that's gonna go we're taking risks <laughs> <laughs> well i mean depending on the kind of risk you know i think you know trust is you know pretty easily oh, gained yeah. yeah and uh you know you know in the case that you would need a therapy cat um you know that also could be arranged but in all and uh, you know the... <laughs> you are my therapy cat yeah, we're, yeah. we're going through therapy right now yeah I don't know yeah. What you're talking about. <laughs> yeah i, I guess yeah that, that is true that is true <laughs> but but yeah like going going through that sort of thing is is rough it's tough and it and i'm glad that it's made you a better person because there are people who never come back for those kinds of experiences and the, the yeah. fact that you were able to is you know that's just a testament to your strength as in, as a person, your willingness to continue to live your life and not only like live your life like authentically, but also like pursue the things that you want to pursue, like that's really awesome. And I wish more people had like more, um, more, I guess more opportunities to see people who have come out of those difficult experiences and who have been made stronger for them because i feel like there are so many people who are who fall into like deep depressions who fall into just spiral spiraling like like mental issues because they don't have any frame of reference they they think that what they have is like the end all be all but i like what i would like to see is like more people like you like sharing like like what you've gone through and and for people to be able to look at that and say oh i've gone through something similar to this and you know this person was able to you know find their way out of it maybe i can too 
type of thing. Yeah. So, like, I guess the reason why this the podcast can feel like therapy at times is mainly because, like, I want to, not only do I genuinely want to get to know people, but I want people who watch the podcast to have a, have a frame of reference of, like, these are people who enjoy VR chat, who, who love using this platform, but they have gone through things that I've gone through and I can like find someone to relate to in one of these podcasts sort of thing. So like it's, oh, me- yeah. yeah, it's meant to be like a, a means for like, you know, people to feel less alone and to be able to trust again, like you did. Yeah. I mean, VR chat has helped me get my trust in people. Like I have plenty of people I met that I trust with my anything to be honest mm-hmm. i i'd give him my soul like here you can have this <laughs> i trust you yeah <laughs> i mean i met my best friend his name's vale um met him through another group that i've been the one of the uh, communities i've been hanging out with for a year uh me and him best friends he tells me his issues i tell him hit mine and we just help each other out he helps me Right now, I'm trying to get health insurance. I'm having issues trying to get that. And he's worked with health insurance, so he's trying to help me get it. So mm-hmm. it's always the people you know. It's that a lot of people can help you through what problems you have. It's okay to tell people. It's okay to talk to people and be like, hey, I need help. Hey, I have these issues. Can can I talk to you about them? Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people. Yeah, there's going to be people who be like, no, I don't want to hear it. But there are people out there be like, yes, I would love to listen to you. Yes, I would love to help you. Yes, I'm going to be there for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the best part about VR chat. Mm -hmm. And there there are plenty of people who are just genuinely doing their best to be there for other people. And because like, I think, you know, people want people to be there for them too, like all the same. Um, Like, I feel like I'm, yeah, like I, I feel like I'm in a unique situation where like i i i enjoy vr chat i'm very very new i don't know if you know but i'm relative i'm relatively new to vr chat i i i I fake it really well but like i you know i i'm still learning so many things about like how to like maneuver through vr chats menus oh yeah we talked about the first time we met (laughs) yeah 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 that is true yeah so so like but I feel like I have experienced so much again like I've been alive for a very long time and I feel like I've experienced so much that like I feel like I may be a little too much for people or like like it may seem like I don't need anyone else need anyone's support because you know I seem so like put together and you know like you said I seem very calm and uh like calm and mature so like it's like I mean that 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 is accurate but I I feel like everyone needs people that they can you know turn to and and be willing to talk to and share you know share things about their life that that is difficult I I got people like that too like I got I have at least one person um a couple of people I would say that I can that that I can do that with well you got me too yeah that's great and i and you have me as well for (laughs) for what it's worth obviously like after this podcast this will not be the last time like we talk so of course it better not be i'd be very mad at you (laughs) yeah yeah i I, (laughs) yeah i i would i would i would hate that for me to be the case but i i also know that i can be like super super like occupied like with what, what i'm doing with my own life so like I love to talk. Oh. I love to chat, but like I may seem like I'm like kind of like out of like MIA occasionally. But like don't ever like don't ever feel like you can't come to me with anything or like you like just cuz I'm not online doesn't mean I won't answer. I will answer every time as soon as I can. So, just want to, you know, throw that oh, out yeah. there. Yeah, I don't expect you to drop everything for me. I, I don't expect anyone to drop anything for a person. If they, if everyone has their own lives. Like what like you said, everyone, you have your own life. Um, like I was talking my, about my friend Vale, me and him don't message every single day. We message when we get the chance. Like I'll send him a hey, three days later I'll get a hey back or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the moments where it's just the fact that we stay in contact no matter what. It's not... No matter the distance or how long it is, he will reply back to me when he has time. 
And it's like you said, you reply when you have, you're able to reply. It's not that you're just ignoring the messages. You're just like, I just can't get to it right now, mm-hmm. which is totally fine with anyone. I feel like it, someone can't drop their life for another person. Mm. It's just not fair for that person. It's not fair for me. So that's just how I see it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I definitely see it the same yeah. way. And I, it's really great that you're able to, like, eat despite, you know, um, dealing with your, your, like, what, like, how did you describe them? Like, is it like, like mental, like, mental illnesses uh like i have severe depression and severe anxiety okay and you're still able to Mm -hmm. you're even with those things you're still able to logically understand that like just because a person doesn't respond back right away that doesn't mean that they're like ghosting you or like they don't want to talk to you like you're still able to to process that and like did that take time for you to to kind of like like build up in your mind because I know there there are tons of people who suffer from things like that especially in this day and age and I feel like a lot of people tend to just jump the gun they tend to like think that if someone doesn't respond to them like within an hour that like they're that they that person doesn't care about them or that they're they weren't they they oh you say you care about me but like you you, you didn't respond back within a certain period of time like was that something that you had to like figure out for yourself or is that something that you just kind of naturally understood because, you know, you have such a good heart and, you know, you, you want to understand people? Um, to be honest, I think it's both. I always knew in, like, the back of my mind, but at the same time, it's like a thought that builds up in your head over and over again at first. It's like, from the beginning, I was, like, in the back of my head, well, not in the back of my head, it's like, is this person ignoring me? Is this person ghosting me? Am I doing it? Am I being annoying? Am I messaging too much? Am I doing this, 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 this? To the point where you think that it's your fault and you are bothering them and you, don't, you can't do this. You can't be their friend. You feel like you're doing too much. Um. Then I talked to my friend. I was like, hey, am I bothering you? Hey, is in he was like no you're not bothering me it's i'm busy you're busy and then we just kind of talked it out and now it's like just always a process in my head now like hey person's not ignoring you they're just busy they can't drop everything for you yeah it's just it's a learning thing to be honest Mm -hmm. so so you're saying it's possible for people to to learn this simply by the person asking the person the question like if they're if they're feeling anxious about it just asking the person the question and getting their understanding talking through it can can definitely like help that help people with that oh yeah communication is always key i think especially like if uh, like a beginning of a relationship always communicate your feelings don't ever hold it because that's something i had to learn that like after all my relationships that's one thing I had to learn is communication. I, I, I still have problem with communication. I will hold things in, but I'm learning to express my feelings because you can't keep building up because that will just hurt you more and more. Um, into the point where you end up just hating that person. You end up you just like I can't stand this person. I don't want to be with them. I don't want to get close to them. It's just you gotta talk. That's the best thing. Talking is going to help so much more than just keeping it in. Yeah, yeah. I, I think a, a lot of people don't know how to express their thoughts. Like I've, uh, I, I'm, I'm almost certain that there are some people who choose to be mutes because, like, I don't know if you've heard something like this, but mm-hmm. some people choose to be mutes because they can't trust their brain to process what they want to say. So they'll like use text to speech instead because it allows them time to. I guess, I guess process them their thoughts or their words better because they don't know how to really like, just in the moment use their voice to express their feelings. Have you heard about anything like yeah. that? Oh, I experience that all the time myself. Like I will say whatever first comes to my mind without even thinking about it, and I mean I've, I feel like texting so much easier to express my emotions 
then this explaining it, which this is the one thing I'm learning the most is how to express my words in the moment. Like I'll sit there and text a long, or not a long message. It'll take me two, three, four or five minutes to just type a message saying something sweet or something, just what's on my mind. Cause it's so hard to be in the moment and express something and be like, Hey, I feel like, uh, like that. You just like, you got to say something in the moment. Cause you don't, you feel like you have to say something yeah. right then and there. Mm. To me that, I mean, that's what a, not, why a good reason to be a mute when you, for me that I feel like I would have, I would have been a mute just for that reason myself. If I've, decided to been a mute from the start but <laughs> i can never be a mute <laughs> i'm too expressive <laughs> yeah yeah and and thank goodness for that you know we we, we would be uh, we'd be denied your lovely voice so uh, thank goodness <laughs> that you know you, you chose not to take the mute path obviously there's nothing wrong with mutes i have many i know many people who've chosen that path and mutes can be they're just people too so and mm -hmm. I, I actually want to talk to more mutes personally because I find them interesting. I, I want to know more about, like, this is kind of like a secret thing that I haven't really, I haven't really talked about this publicly, but like, I'm actually really interested in understanding why mutes, why people choose to be mutes, the reasoning behind that. And how does that affect their relationships? Yeah. How does that affect like their, their real life? Like, is it like, for what reasons? And if there, if there are any correlation between various other mutes, um, is there any, like any dots that can be connected? Um, so kind of like a like research. I learn that too. That's actually really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it, I've been thinking about it as something as like a kind of like a research type thing and maybe to like, I don't know, like, I don't know if I'd do a documentary about it. Like, that's, like, it's, like, just super lofty. That's super, super lofty. But, like, <laughs> like it, it would... Just make a whole documentary about mutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like, why not? Like, I, I, I feel like that would be really that's interesting. True. Yeah. So... I agree. I think that would be really fun. Just to make a documentary, trying to figure people out. Because mm. that, I mean, to me, I feel like some mutes... Some people who are going through transition, transition stuff like that, they want to be our chat makes them feel like who they want to be. Right, but right. some people have like their voices, they're not on the testosterone or hormones yet, and their voices haven't changed. So they want to feel like a girl or feel like a boy or feel like how they want to be. And without hearing their voice and be like, no, I'm not there yet. I yeah. feel like that kind of makes them feel more immersed in what they want to be. That's one thing that I feel like people could be mute for, at least. I agree. I agree. There, there's definitely that that sense of uh, disconnect with the sound of like your voice along with what you perceive yourself to be. And I, I would not be surprised in the slightest that that is why many people choose to be mute. Um but I know yeah. it's not the mo I know it's not the like the only reason. So that's what I'd want to like learn more about. So I don't yeah, know. yeah, it's something that I'm I'm definitely considering over time. But it's not. This isn't about me. This is this is podcast about you. It's <laughs> not about me. It's about us. Don't. Yes. <laughs> it's about us. Don't worry about it. It's your podcast. It's about us. <laughs> true. True. <laughs> but uh, I'm just a guest. <laughs> well. I wouldn't have a podcast without guests, so yeah, it's it's great that you were here. So thank you again. Aww. Um. So like, do you do you like? Mm, how can I word this? Do you find um? Do you find certain like what do you find interesting about? I guess this is a silly question, but what do you find interesting about humans? Oh, hmm. What makes you That's curious? That's a good question, because <laughs> I... Hmm. To be honest, it's their lives. Like, everyone has a different life going on. Like, I'm the... You're, everyone's the main story of their own life. The main character of their own life. 
So it's like, what's going on in their life? What's why are they sad? Why are they happy? Why are they feeling the way they're feeling? I want to know what's going on in their lives. What's making them feel that way? Because I only know my story. I don't know anyone else's. Hmm. So I guess that's what fascinates me about humans. Everyone has their own little story going on. Someone having a bad day one day or someone's having going through an exciting event. Someone's just getting proposed to. It's it's like all these stories going on and I want to know why or what's happening, why, how they're feeling. Just kind of like those kind of examples. Yeah, yeah. Like that that is that is very very true like people have their own lives their own their own story the things that make them who they are and you know like that's like to be able to trust a person with that story or to share part of that story with someone i think is like that is like the that's one of the, like the epitome of like the human experience like being willing and open to share part of what you've gone through a part of essentially yourself with another person to whatever degree you choose to do that as and yeah i find that extremely extremely interesting as well it makes it's it's good that you're that 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 particular aspect is interesting to you and i can definitely definitely relate to that it's it's important to keep in mind when you are when you're being when you're interacting with various people and people who you may not understand people who you've never met i think it's important to kind of understand that you know people have different lives and have grown up differently and just because you know just because maybe something that a person did that may not make sense to to you that doesn't mean that that is that is the epitome of all that they are. That doesn't mean that, you know, like because of like X, Y, and Z, because of like X, Y, and Z, that doesn't amount to the the entirety of what a person is. And I feel like it's important to be open to meeting new people and be open to not only sharing your story, but engaging with someone else's story as well, rather than, you know, taking a, a moment in time that maybe you know maybe have maybe a person feels though as though they may a person may feel as though they've been wronged by a person or they they perceive they've been wronged by someone and to ultimately write that person off completely without giving the entirety of like of who they are a chance like talking to them and like getting to know them and like really understand like is is this person actually someone that I that I dislike or someone that I could potentially like find as really really interesting I think it's 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 just important for people to be more aware of you know what they of, of other people and what they've gone through because you don't know what people have gone through everyone has gone through many many things and and they may be vastly different from what you've gone through and we need more understanding. Agreed. Mm. I, I definitely agree on all that. Mm. Cool, cool. I feel like everyone has their own lives and everyone has their own issues. And we can't judge on someone just because of like a certain issue they're having, for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm I'm Sorry, definitely I answer a message real fast. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hmm. But yeah, that was a very, very good answer. I, I, I'll let you take care of that, but I'll, I'll keep running my mouth. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, I always am very interested in how people perceive other people, and, and again, that's why I did the podcast. It's important. I want to understand more people and understand why people love or like um vr chat so much like why yeah why is that why do they like logging in why do they log in um like is there is like some people like dedicate their entire lives or dedicate a large portion of their life to vr chat in a, in a lot of cases and you know it's you know for some people reality just is not interesting for a lot of people like do you 
I, are you hopeful about like the future with regards to like, you know, how VR is evolving as a, as a, as a platform? I know you're 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 studying cybersecurity, and like obviously that's going to get more and more com more and more complex. So like, well, I guess what are your feelings about like the future of like VR and like, like people like, spending, the majority of their time in VR? Is that something you would find yourself doing? I know these are a lot of questions, but. Um, you can kind of answer them as you see um, fit. For cybersecurity way, I don't know if, how safe it will be because it's really easy. To me, it seems really easy to dock someone just because, especially people who are on here all the time, they're drinking and everything. People take advantage of the drunks, of course. Mm -hmm. I know plenty who will say whatever the fuck. If you want to ask them a question, they'll answer it honestly when they're drunk, which is not good. I'll tell you that. Yeah. And so with people doing that 24-7 in VR chat, I feel like a lot of people are distancing, dis distancing themselves from reality, which I can understand that because sometimes I'm like, I need a break from reality. I need to get in my VR headset. I need to feel like I'm a different person. I don't want to be myself anymore. I want to be here. I want to be Galaxy. I want to be Galaxy is here. I don't want to be my real life self. I don't want to deal with my real life problems. I just want to be immersed here. Deal with my friends and just have fun. Which... With VR chat, or not VR chat, but VR experiencing becoming more and more, I don't know if it's going to end up that way, but I think of Sorter Online, if you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. That is the first thing I look to when I think yeah. about VR and the future, what it, what it could be. Yeah. Yeah. One, I would love for that to happen. Not like Same. getting stuck in a game, of course, but... But, but, full, but full immersion. <laughs> like, fully... like, I can feel someone touching my arm i can have the emotions i can actually look down and be like hey that's me in this game it's like i'm fully in this game mm -hmm. like some people have phantom sense in this game which me i don't have it uh, i remember you saying you don't have it you want to have it but you don't correct yes. i know plenty of people who do which i'm kind of jealous of because i want to feel phantom sense same i want to i want to know what it feels like yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to meet um, someone else who doesn't have it and wants to have it, but you know, I don't know if that's ever going to happen for at least, at least yeah. as it stands. <laughs> There's actually a world that's supposed to hypnotize you into having it. I so didn't hear about that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I tried it. Didn't work. Oh, <laughs> Sad. <yeah>. I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but um, there are so many different things that I think would change up into VR chat, which is where VR is going. I kind of hope it goes into like sort of online style where you're fully emerged, but at the same time, I know where it's going to go with that, with people staying in VR more than real life. They're going to avoid their real life problems by being in VR more than anything, which some people you can't control some people are going to be like that and there's not really you can do to help them unless you can crash you can go be cyber security mode and crash them yeah, yeah. and make <laughs> be like hey you you've been on here way too long you need a break my dude <laughs> yeah but that is some things you can't really help yeah you, you can't tell people how to live their lives you can't tell people what to do you can only make suggestions that are hope that are you know obviously mm -hmm. aimed to be in their best interest so yeah yeah i i i definitely agree there's uh i definitely am also for the sort of online style stuff um i've actually personally have looked into what what would be necessary to potentially have that happen and at the moment it's um the the process to achieve that is ultimately pretty um, what they call invasive in that like the the means to achieve that means fucking with people's like brain cells like actual like their 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 neurology essentially to hijack yeah. the neurology and ultimately you know scan that and 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 
ultimately just make like make all those elements of one's brain available in VR, which is very dangerous and pretty scary um, for a lot of people. Oh, so, yeah. So yeah, at the moment we're not quite there, but I, I I'm confident that we will ultimately at least get partially there. Like people have come up with uh like I've actually looked into this a lot. So I'm I'm always curious to find out what people think about this because I've I've researched this like in, in relatively heavy detail. That there there are people who are finding ways. Obviously, there are haptic suits um, that kind of like allow that to happen, but you know they're very big and bulky. Um, in most cases yeah. and there's also like there's also been this group that have been developing um, a means by which um, certain uh, certain like chemicals that have been mixed together will activate under certain temperatures so like if you're in a very hot place um, the chemicals will like mix together to create that heat sensation that you would normally feel to create it's like it's like haptic it's haptic um, haptic um, temperature essentially it's like another version oh, of that kind of cool yeah yeah i didn't know about the gloves or the temperature thing i know it about the vest but i didn't know about the temperature thing that's kind of cool. interesting i don't know like i just feel like i just need to put icy hot on my hands <laughs> yeah i mean like that would be the way to go about it like that icy hot is you know a way to do that but it would actually like respond like you know technically like when you like be in a cold or hot place which is super super cool and super interesting <laughs> But um, I do like the call to ice. Yeah, that was that was a good that was a good dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a good one. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. let's go into the lava. Put yeah. ice all over me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm I'm set. Like I I'm 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 fully there. <laughs> I'm 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 hot. I'm burned. I'm warm. <laughs> But but yeah, like that that sort of thing is super super interesting, and I'm I'm hopeful that that will uh, that that will happen in uh, in our lifetime. I would definitely definitely hope so for that. Um, end up being grandmas when it happens. We're gonna be old. Oh my god, we can be old ladies and play the game immersed. And I'll be like, hey, Nan, I just got worried. You worried about those dragons? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we would definitely need uh, voice um, voice modifiers, <laughs> or maybe we'd be fortunate yeah, enough to oh, keep yeah. our voices even we're like like grandmas. <laughs> that would be really really cool. Oh yeah, well, hopefully <laughs> we'll be like, um, hey there guys, how's it going? You want to help us fight this dragon? <laughs> Meanwhile, we're like, we're like, oh, how old are you, ladies? Eighty seven. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah, and like, and like, it's funny that you actually bring up the fact like of being elderly because I think the the really cool thing about like progressing with VR technology is that people who are elderly or disabled are able to like do things like VR chat even like right now we're able to have VR chat as a means to like, oh, yeah. feel like they can like move around and have access to things like and to ways that they didn't have in real life or they don't have in real life and then when you get older you can have that immersion of like having VR where you can like be your ideal self and you know reflect like what you feel inside of like who you are and everything and like elderly people who maybe can't go outside or they're maybe like in a nursing home like that's like there's like therapy like that can be used as like therapy like there are medical like oh, uses yeah. for like VR technology which I which is why I'm confident that it will actually get to the point where you know um it will become if not fully immersive partially immersive where full body will be the standard and you know haptic technology will be integrated into the technology as is and you know we'll be buying headsets along with like the uh the little like like uh full body vest, vest and, and everything prayer. yeah like we'll be that'll all be included because technology will will get more advanced and we'll be able to like have that for cheaper prices like yeah i yeah i have mentioned to a friend that wait what 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 crap what was the what i completely blanked on my thought um um shit i totally blanked think pretty kitty think 
Yeah, um... It was something related to VR. It was related to that technology. Um... Uh... Damn, I can't remember. Okay, well, it, it will come back to me, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. it, was, it was related to, to that... Um... Oh right, I just remembered. Ha ha ha. That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> so um so yeah, there is um I don't know if you are aware of um of Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine five. Are you familiar with that technology? Have you heard of it? Uh no I'm not. What is I haven't heard of it. Well, um Unreal Engine is uh it is basically a technology that um that developers use to create games. So it's basically like an engine where you can create assets and ultimately create um, worlds um, oh. and things like that. Um, and it's used in many video games okay. now. It's it's a it's a relatively new. Um, well, Unreal Engine Five is relatively new, but Unreal Engine Five Point One is like the newest that has kind of come into existence. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I bring that up is because there has been there is a demo that you can find, I believe, on YouTube where. Unreal Engine 5 has rendered alt has rendered a realistic version of a Japanese train station. So like when you watch the video, it looks like a real life train station like you would find in Japan, for example. But it's completely just pixels. It's not reality, but it looks oh my gosh. it looks very, very close to reality. And like you can look this up on YouTube, and that's like that's why I'm confident that like as we progress further with like standard like 2D and 3D graphics, in terms of developing video games and such, I'm confident that that technology will evolve into the VR sector and into VR and also augmented reality as well. Um, and that will oh, create, yeah. that will create a larger sense of immersion, and to to the point where we won't maybe we won't be able to discern VR from reality at a certain point, which once again, it's pretty scary, but I'm confident that we're going to get to that point because we're already getting to near realism with, um, with Unreal Engine, with, um, with what else? Like deep fakes, um, things like that. Like it's, it's becoming a thing. So yeah, that's, that's all kind of in ties hmm. into like my question about like, what do you think about VR? And like you know your feelings on that, so I didn't mean to start rambling. Yeah, I sound like um, I sound like a massive geek. Um, so I'm. Um, it's okay. We're all geek. That is. You're a beautiful geek. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to think so, <laughs> and you know, as are you. So I'm fortunate to know um, a very attractive geek and a number of other attractive geeks also. But you know, oh my heart. <laughs> you're you're the newest. You're the newest beautiful geek that I've met. So you know, that's. That's special. <laughs> Just touching my heart all over. <laughs> so, um, I guess with all of that said, um, is there anything else? Okay, well, actually, where do you see yourself in five years? Oh, five years. Let me see. Hopefully, with a, like, I bought my own house, I hope. Or, like, have something that I can rent that allows animals, because I'm a big animal lover. I have my cat, but I also want a dog. Um, maybe married. Um, if not, that's fine. I can, like, being married is not, like, super important to me. Yeah, in a relationship, I would love it to end up in marriage, but marriage isn't super important to me. I would, like, if anything, I want to support pour myself, decorate my place as much as I want. I want glitter walls. Let me have my glittery walls. <laughs> Wouldn't it be hard to sleep with glittery uh -huh. walls? With them sparkling at you all the time? Um, I mean, if you have the lights off. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that, that is true. Yeah. I like moonlight, um, though. So. Oh, uh, that's true. I do like moonlight. I have to have some light in my my room. I am not gonna lie. I don't like being in the dark. I like being able to see where I'm getting. If I have to pee in the middle of the night, I want to be able to get up, not trip over something, and go to my toilet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Um. Let me think. I would like to have a career. I love to be able to 
do something I love and wake up in the morning, be like, I'm going to work. I'm okay with this and go out the door, not wake up and be like, I have to go to work. Fuck my life. I don't want to go yeah. kind of situation. You don't want to hate I want to be able to get up and yeah. And like another thing, I want to have a remote job. I want to be able to wake up, just go to my computer and work and still be home, still be able to see my cat or see animals, be home, clean, clean, clean as I do schoolwork, not schoolwork, but uh, work mm -hmm. or something, yeah. be able to keep myself intact, not overwhelm myself with people being around me, with customers in my ears. Um, I've worked retail most of my life, so I'm just kind of tired of dealing with angry customers all the time. Been there. Uh, I mean, it's not all the time, but I don't, I just tired of talking to people, putting a fake smile, saying, hi, how are you? <laughs> Welcome to wherever I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's... I like to have something I can either remote, I can go travel if I want to. Like, I've always wanted to travel. I've been to California, I've been to Seattle, I've been to Chicago, I've been to West Virginia. But I want to travel more. I want to go out of the country. I want to go anywhere I want. Mm -hmm. Without worrying about, hey, I gotta go to my job. Hey, I gotta go to a wedding. Just like, I don't have to worry about going to my job or getting fired just because I'm going, I'm traveling somewhere. Right, right. I can just open my laptop or computer and be like, oh, here's my work. Da -da 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 done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, I would love to open a uh, sanctuary for, like, animals, injured animals. Oh, wow. Or, like, I mean, that's one of my main goals is have like a sanctuary for animals that are old or going through like uh, when they're in the horse races or something, adopt a horse that can't race anymore so they can still have a happy life, not to worry about the rest of their life being poorly or getting shot or anything like that. I want to help animals and I mean, I love to help people, but a lot of them are never grateful, not as much as animals are. True. True and real. <laughs> so at least that's my goals. Yeah. Okay. I love those goals. Those are very, very... Those are very, very reasonable and achievable goals. I, I Maybe the sanctuary may be like a few more years out, probably, but who knows? I could be wrong yeah. about that. I could be wrong about that, but... You know, it's good to like have the thought and have the desire to want to see it, to see it into fruition. I think that's that's really really cool. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I can definitely definitely respect that. Um, what anime do you like? Ooh, right now I have been watching Chainsaw Man. Same. Uh, that's been a really good one. I just saw the newest episode today. Also, I'm a big Magical Girl anime girl. I love Magical Girl animes, uh, Sailor Moon, but I also love the dark Magical Girl animes, like, uh, Mac M Madoka. Oh, not Makoto. Madoka. Uh, Madoka. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I love that one. That one's my absolute favorite when it comes to Magical Girl, dark and Magical Girl animes. There's a few others, like, uh, oh, fuck, what's that one? It's about making Magical Girls. I can't remember the name of it, but... There's so many dark magical girl animes that are just so interesting. And then there's always um this like what's that one? Durarara, of course, is one of my favorite animes. Um I said Chainsaw Man. There's uh I reincarnate as a villainess, so I'm trying to tame the final boss. Something like that. I can't remember the full name of it, but Yep. That's how it goes. I'm and pretty sure I watched that one too. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> and there's the one about uh, I can't remember how that one went. It's another villainous anime that's really good. Hmm. Um, I haven't. Ones I I don't know if I want to see is Made in Abyss. Uh... That one I've heard really messed up things about. I've <laughs> seen stuff on TikTok about it, and I'm like. 
Ooh, um, I don't know if that's gonna work for me. Oh, it's gonna be too heavy? <laughs> it might- I mean, I do like the gory stuff, but I don't know if I- it just, I have to be in the mood for it. Like, mm. I've seen all of, uh, D Dongo Rampa. I've seen all Dongo Rampa. I've seen, um, the one class one. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, uh, like these students get teleported into a haunted mansion. This little girl kills them all. Hmm. I can't hmm. think. I don't know. No, I don't know that one. Oh, I can't think of it top of my head, but it's a, like a horror one. Um,. I like Salma Spider or Salma Spider. So what? That one's a good one. It's a that one I really liked. Um, I'm just a big weep. I just watch a whole bunch of different animes. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's totally fine. Like that's totally reasonable. Like it's like I wouldn't call myself a weep these days, but I definitely have watched and. And I don't, I don't watch a lot of anime these days, but I have watched a lot of anime throughout my throughout my life. So like I, I know a number, oh, yeah. yeah, I know a number of the classics. Um, I would encourage you to, if you can get your hands on now, then here and there, um, that shit's heavy. Like I don't think I, I don't think anyone who's like who was born after like two thousand. Or even like right on the cusp of 2000, the year 2000. I don't think anyone has ever seen that. Um, if you want something that's like really like psychologically like, I wouldn't say like it's it's move it's a moving it's very very it's a very very moving anime, and you can tell it's dated it's yeah. old. But there's a lot of dark shit that happens in that anime, and if that's something you're interested in, I would I would encourage you to check check that out. It's called Now Then Here and There. And, uh... Now then, here and there. Okay, I'll have to check that one out. Yeah. Um... I haven't heard of it, but I was born before the 2000s, I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, it, it, it is definitely an older series, for sure. And, uh, you know, maybe... Maybe, okay. like, if you want... Like, I think it would be really cool, like, for us to, like, like watch, watch stuff together occasionally. Like, if we're both on at the same time, that'd be cool. To, like, you know, watch... Watch yeah, that'd be movie totally, or anime. I'll totally be down for that. Cool, cool. Glad to hear it. We'll have a community night where we, we get all, like, everyone together and watch some anime. That'd be really fun. Yeah, yeah. The, um... Yeah, like, I... Like, I watch a lot... I've... Well, I guess I can talk about a couple of anime that I've seen as well. But I, I would say, like... A couple the the ones I've seen like I like Magical Girl anime but that's not like my go-to, but I really did enjoy yeah. like back in the day I loved Sailor Moon I loved um, Amadoka Magica um, I I loved Cardcaptor Sakura um, oh yeah that's a yeah, good one too classic um, so like I I I've definitely did you see the remake that. of that um there is a modern remake of Cardcaptor Sakura. Mm hmm They made it, like, after uh, happened the, the older one, and they made it to continue it. Oh, no, I never even heard that that was a thing. Never even heard. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I guess if I had to kind of, like, bring, like, all of my, like, all of the anime, well, if I had to encapsulate the, in the anime that I'm interested in, it is mainly mm -hmm. action-oriented, Action oriented, psychologically stimulating, and I guess, I guess deep, um, like, like, um, I guess emotionally, emotionally raw. Yeah. 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 So, like, that's that covers that's like Vinland Saga. Like, I love, I love Vinland Saga. Um, I I love I'm I'm recently I've been starting to watch JoJo. Um, so. I can't get into JoJo. I really can't. I mean it it is it is it's well, not technically but it's a show that's like it's super masculine. Um, but I don't know if that's your reason or not that you can't get into. It. Why can't you get into it instead of me guessing? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like it, it 
Like, I can only watch the first episode, and I always get distracted, so I never watch the next one, or it just, like, it just, every, I've tried to watch it three times, and I just can't get past the first episode. I don't know why, it's just, like, I get, watch, you get to the end, I don't go on the second one, and I do something else or watch something else. I don't know if it's, like, the art style of it, I think the art style kind of messes with me. Mm -hmm. It's just different from what I'm used to, and then maybe the voice actors kind of annoy me, I don't remember. I have to rewatch it again if I can remember because it's been a while since I've tried to rewatch it. Okay, so you're talking about like season. You're talking about the first episode of the very first, the very beginning of it. Yeah. Yes. Um, the the first the first few the first few episodes are are that's foundation, that's story, that's lore, that's being built up. So they're hard. Yeah. They're, they're difficult to get through. But I I, I like this sort of thing. I like lore. So like I, I was it was easier for me to like watch, but I understand a lot of people just getting distracted for sure. But um, it's it gets better. <laughs> it, it gets it gets better. <laughs> okay, I'll try again. Yeah. I'll try it again. <laughs> yeah, it it really it becomes um, a lot more fun. What were we gonna say? Uh, you said you liked like a deep anime. Have you watched The Silent Voice yet? It's a movie. I have heard of it. Um. I've heard of it, but I have not watched it. Um, I know that I need to watch it. I feel it. like you would like it. I think I would like it too. Like, I, it's just, it's one of those movies that I just have not taken a, a good look at. Um, but I know mm -hmm. the quality of it is very, very, like, emotionally raw, for sure. So, I'm, I will have to check that out very, very soon. Um, have you watched anything by um, Makoto Shinkai? Like, like uh, your name, or five centimeters per second, or uh, I think I've been wanting to see your name. I haven't watched it. I've only one that I've seen really is um, the Silent Voice and something Soda Pop one, but I don't think it's by them. I those only two mo anime movies I've seen so far. I haven't. I'm not much of a movie watcher, so I don't watch a lot of movies, even if it's anime. Same. I just watch more series stuff mm -hmm. yeah which is that that's definitely what i used to do um way um back in the day so i definitely uh can relate to mm -hmm. that i'm not much of a movie watcher either but um yeah there is um yeah um makoto shinkai stuff is so good so so good um but yeah yeah i i watch a wide variety of series like i've even i've even enjoyed gundam um i've enjoyed a number of gundam series i can't get into it yeah, yeah, it's. I, I don't. I think it's the mech. <laughs> the mechas are aren't pretty enough. I can't get. <laughs> nope, they're not pretty enough for me. They gotta, be, they gotta be Chef Kiss's gorgeous. They gotta <laughs> catch my eye. They're yes, they're shiny metals, but that's all they are. They're just shiny metal. Mm -hmm. It doesn't keep my eye. <laughs> that is fair. That that's totally totally reasonable. Like it's Gundam definitely isn't for anyone. But like yeah, I'm definitely kind of like all over the spectrum. Like my my anime tastes mm -hmm. are like kind of all over the place because I've watched so much, so now I'm I'm very yeah. very like, like I'm I wouldn't say I guess I'm kind of like a connoisseur. I've always kind of like leaned towards that. So like I watch I watch stuff <laughs> I'm that I'm a connoisseur. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I I I try to watch the stuff that isn't very popular, but I also try to watch stuff that I mm -hmm. that I know. Um, maybe good and quality that others probably may have overlooked. So, like, oh God, um, there's a series, an anime series called um, um, uh, a Science um, Science Fell in Love. So I tried to prove it. Like, there's an anime called that, and it's it's a it's just a it's a rom com. It's an anime rom com between scientists who are using who are trying to work together they're like co they're like coworkers, and they're trying to work together to figure out the the ultimate, like what 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 um what scientific method leads to love, like like what is hmm. what is the uh, the method by which Science can prove that, you know, if you follow this method, you will ultimately reach a uh, love. So it's like, it's this fun rom-com yeah. that's like very, very like scientifically nerdy and stuff. And uh, yeah, hmm. but I know many people haven't watched it. 
that's why you know i'll have to watch it that sounds really interesting i love rom-coms yeah it's I, super I, cute <laughs> being in like being like single i don't watch a lot of rom-coms i'm like i because growing up i watched a whole bunch and i'm like i want that in a relationship i want yeah. that i like have the anime aspect in relationships and then when i get disappointed i'm like i don't want to watch them anymore <laughs> i understand <laughs> <They're lies. laughs> it's like you're, you're reminding me of how lonely i am <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I sometimes I, I do catch myself feeling feeling that way, but you know, I balance it out with like shows like JoJo and Villain Saga. Like there's there's like no like romance in those shows. It's just like it's just pure raw like we're gonna go in, we're gonna beat some ass and you know we're gonna look cool doing it kind of thing. So yeah, it's Yeah. But, but yeah, like, I, I can That's definitely funny. understand that, yeah. <laughs> so, to kind of round things out, okay. is, there any, is there anything that you're currently going through? I ask everyone this question. This is a question I will ask everybody when, I, when they come on my podcast. Is there something that you're going through in your life currently that you are struggling to make sense of or struggling to you know um i guess you know understand and you haven't maybe you haven't talked to someone about it or maybe you have and haven't really gotten a, a clear enough answer and is there like is there anything that maybe i can offer advice to you on and that's okay if you don't but i like to you know you know i had therapy cat so oh my therapy kitty always oh, touching my heart yeah I um <laughs> <laughs> I guess the main thing I'm going through is my schooling. I am going through another year, even though it's only, I only have two classes left after my spring semester, which I'm only taking two. So and I only have four classes left. But the thing about it is one's in fall and one's in next spring. So they separate it where I'm still taking a whole nother year just for two classes, which it's putting me a lot of stress thinking, is this what I even want to do for my life? Am I meant to do this? Is this what I'm trying to get to my goal? Is it, am I going to be happy in this career, this kind of situation? Because I feel like I've been doing it for almost four years. I should be getting a bachelor's degree, but I'm only getting my associates because I changed degrees. Um, you changed and I'm majors, to the point like, or... yeah. Okay. I changed uh, from computer programming to cybersecurity. Okay, okay. Yeah, that, that would kind of delay things, I guess. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. And now I'm just like, I think I'm just over exhausted from school. And uh, I feel like maybe this is not the curve for me because it's like one ear coming, one, information going through one ear and then it's coming out the other. That's what it feels like. I'm just feel like I'm not getting anything and like I just makes me feel like maybe I'm not in the right career path which I feel like maybe I I because I was so interested in the beginning and now just going through all the school stuff I'm so exhausted by it to the point where I feel like I'm just not interested anymore mm. yeah yeah I think yeah school can definitely cause like an over like an oversaturation of, of of a, of a certain topic that you can, you can cause a person to lose interest in it. Like I thought, for example, I thought I wanted to major in English. Um, I realized that I did not want to after I was involved in it for, you know, a couple, like a year or two. I just, it just didn't make sense, for, make sense to me. Cause I, I thought I wanted to, I wanted to be a writer and I thought English would be the way to do that. And it wasn't so you know, I lost interest in it. I moved on to something else. I switched my major. So with regards yeah. to you and like losing interest in, you're losing interest in cybersecurity, right? Yeah. So I guess I would ask you this question. Why did you go into cybersecurity in the first place? Um... To be honest, I thought I'd be good at it because I've always been around computers and that uh, it's one of the highest, higher paying jobs to be in or career paths to be in. 
So that's the main two, to be honest. Okay. And does that does that motivation still stand now? I mean, of course. I, well, not to be an interesting computer, because this, the whole being in the classes have made me feel like I'm not good enough to be in my computer classes. And, like, are being good at my computer, and then, but the money thing is the only issue, the reason why I'm still in this. Okay, okay. Well, mm -hmm. I will say that though money is, it money can be a good motivator, it always has to be more than that. There, there always has to be passion behind you when it comes to pursuing some sort of, um, you know, like new uh, a new occupation or a new major there there's always has to be something beyond money because the money the allure of it is great but getting there and the struggle to get there may not be enough to get you all the way there so it always has to be something more so if it if it is just money for you and in, in that in that regard i mean if you aren't interested or you're losing interest in, like are you losing interest in it because you don't feel like you're doing well enough or are you losing interest in it because you just genuinely feel that it's just not going to fit with you it's it's pretty much i feel like i'm not doing well enough i feel like i'm not getting it and i feel like what i'm learning is I'm learning, but I'm not learning at the same time. Like, it's just going through one ear and coming out the other. Like, it's just nothing sticking to my brain. Mm. And um, how, I guess, the results of... Well, how long have you been going after cybersecurity? Uh, about a year now, I think. Or maybe maybe a semester or two. Okay, okay. Uh, so, if it's been about a year, what have has your grades been good? Have you graded well? Um, I passed every class. I mean, I haven't been graded well, but I think it's just because I haven't been able to focus. I have ADHD, so it's really hard for me to focus on anything. So I think that's yeah. one of the main reasons why I'm having a hard time focusing and keeping things in my brain because I have like 20 other thoughts in my brain <laughs> going off at the same time. And I can't stay focused for like five seconds when it comes to schoolwork. Hmm. I see. So if that's the case, then would switching your major help any? do you think I don't think so sadly it's I think it's just because my me be not being able to focus on it is the main issue but I can't get on like ADHD medicine because I don't have health insurance okay so I can't get on any med medication to help myself until I can get health insurance which is I need to find a job that provides health insurance and Right now, that's hard to find. True, true. It is. Um, so, what I could recommend, or, like, I, it's going to be kind of difficult to kind of parse through this, like, in the moment, uh, but I always do this so I can kind of just yeah. try to see what I can do in the moment. Uh, I would su I would suggest, maybe, have you tried any other methods to keep you focused maybe perhaps music um maybe yeah perhaps... i have a method i've discovered a method that's helped me some but it's like starting the method and everything is from the beginning is the hardest part is trying to get it started and then continuing with it what is it but i found one that helped it's just it's um i use a timer so I study for 25 minutes and then the timer goes off and I take a break for 10 minutes, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. And then I'll come back, study for another 25 minutes, take a break for 10 until my assignment's done. Okay. And that's, it keeps me focused. And then I still have a break in between trying to 
keep my brain just restarting my brain kind of sorta yeah 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 some people just have there some people are just more active in their brains like that's just a thing that people are different in regards to that you know like adhd could be a source of that but i also think that it's just people have to find the method that works best for them to help them to focus in a way that is productive and i think is, is that working has that worked or or is it something yeah that, it's you know? been working for me for a bit okay do you believe in it <laughs> Uh, um, I, I did it a couple times and I believe in it, but it's just like, you're not convinced. I give myself excuses. I, well, I just give myself excuses to do schoolwork, to not do schoolwork. So, I mean, it's my own fault for not passing my classes or not studying hard because I have methods to help myself. It's just like. I make excuses for myself, like, oh, I gotta do this, this, this first before I do this, this, this. Mm. So that's how it usually ends up for me. Mm. Okay. So it's probably just me being lazy. <laughs> which there are plenty of lazy people and, and you know, it, it happens. We we cut we catch ourselves being lazy all the time. I catch myself being lazy all the time. It's it's pretty common. Pretty common overall. So are you would you consider yourself organized do you like to be no i am no? not organized You're whatsoever not organized. okay i i wish i was but i'm not <laughs> okay so you say that you have this and this and this to do before you do that um have you tried perhaps doing that in the reverse saying that after you study you'll do like one of those things that you are convincing you to do like or maybe or maybe like you can like do the do one thing you say you have this and this, and this to do you could do one thing do the one thing feel good mm -hmm. about doing that one thing go to do your st go study for a bit of time you can use the timer method as well you study for a period of time during your break maybe you do another thing that you wanted to get hmm. done and then you go back to studying because the the whole idea is like you're trying to trick your brain into into a dopamine reward system so like your brain thinks that as you do one thing you will need to just train it to believe that you do one thing then you, the reward will come will come after rather than thinking that you have to do all of the things that you want to do all at once you can do the one thing or do something that you enjoy doing jump into schoolwork because you've already like you've already made yourself feel good and then after you've done your schoolwork do something that you need to do one thing choose one thing decide what that mm. one thing is going to be and then go back to doing your schoolwork and then choose another thing and just kind of rotate through that throughout the day and i think that will oh. that will instead of like solely just being stuck on doing just the schoolwork you're at least giving yourself a reward for the effort that you're putting into the thing that you may not be particularly interested in or being easily distracted by so huh i'll have to try that that's actually might actually help me a lot more it's possible uh, and of course i'll definitely have to try that yeah let me know if if that if that works and like i would also suggest like i know you're not you say you're not organized but i would suggest like writing down like write down like three or four things that you want to get done in the day and yeah kind of break them up if you can like if it's if, if it's too if it's too much work then don't bother if but if it's not if it's easy for you to do just write down the three or four things that you want to do in that day and then break that up like use your timer use the timer okay. that you used and do one thing then do your schoolwork and then do another thing and then do your schoolwork because i think as you trick your brain into getting the rewards i think you will also realize that okay i i only have this much amount of time in my day so i have to make sure that the thing that i am enjoying doing doesn't take up the time that i need to do my schoolwork because I mean, you're still rewarding yourself but you're still keeping yourself on a schedule without forcing yourself to feel like you're on a schedule. You're just, you're compromising between the things that you want to do and the thing that you need to do. 
and that might potentially help. I'll definitely try that. That that could actually help me. <laughs> cool. I'm tricking my brain. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So I, I'm glad that I can at least offer something in the moment. <laughs> Um, you yeah. Know, with with the you know just have you like sharing that with me and hopefully it's helpful and if it's not you know we can try something else. I tried it. <laughs> yeah, but I also will say that if um like I would also try to find like if if cybersecurity isn't something you're genu you're genuinely interested in anymore, then I would say I would say finish it. If no, if for no other reason okay. than for the sake of not causing yourself to be held back further for a longer period of time, because if you make the goal like, all right, I'm in cybersecurity right now. If I at least finish it, finish what I'm doing, I know that if I switch now, I'm going to be even further delayed from anything else that I want to do. I may be doing the thing that I want to do, but I'm. It's going to take me so much longer to get through that, and that will be even more of a slog. It will take me even longer to get to my goals. Yeah. So, I would say frame it in the in the in the the interest of like, yeah, cybersecurity will earn me a lot of money, but the framing of money is not enough. The framing of like, I'm here now. Cybersecurity can be very interesting. I may feel like I'm not really learning, but I'm going to do my best. I'm going to aim to finish this, and then I'm going to see what happens. Because at the very least, I need to finish something so that I don't feel like I have, you know, one, I don't want to, I don't want you to think that you, that you're a failure for one thing. And two, finishing something is, I think, better than leaving something entirely and starting from scratch. So finish that. Yeah. And then see where you, where you're at and then go from there. Okay. So, I definitely will yeah. do that then. It's it's that it, sounds so much easier. Yeah, it's 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 a reframing type of thing. Like it's it's thinking of it in a different sense, like of like rather than something I need to do, it's something that like that is necessary for me to actually reach my goals, ultimately speaking. For the sake of not being held yeah. back further. So Did that make sense? Hell yeah. <laughs> I definitely yeah, that made perfect sense. To me, at least. <laughs> cool, cool. I'm so, so glad to hear that. And I think with that, I think we can call it here and, uh, you know, wrap things up. But, you know, it's always, always a pleasure to spend time with you and hang out with you, Galaxy. It's, uh, I'm glad that I could have amazing. you on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And and I'm, I'm glad I was here. Yes, you were you were indeed here, <laughs> as per your username. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yes. Thank you so much for being a guest on my podcast. It was a blast, a great time, and I'm sure there'll be even more things for us to talk about as time goes on and getting to know each other better. Of and uh, you know, you no, know, hopefully. You know, growing the friendship that we've uh, that we've established relatively easily, given how well we've just vibed with each other. So, I'm really looking forward to to that. Hell yeah! <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Me neither. So, I want to thank you guys. Thank you all for tuning in, for hanging out with us, for hanging out through this podcast hopefully you enjoyed yourselves hopefully it was worth the time and it wasn't you know too dull hopefully we kept things um interesting and you know occasionally spicy but you know now we, we hopefully we kept things very very uh, <laughs> occasionally <yeah>. spicy <laughs> very very um <laughs> entertaining and hopefully you learned something if nothing else maybe you've learned something you walked away with something maybe you're encouraged and i think that's a great thing too so I just want to thank you guys again for being here and and for supporting the podcast. And of course, if you enjoyed yourself, you enjoyed the podcast, please feel free to um, subscribe to my channel for free. It's super easy. Please do subscribe if you enjoyed it and um, share with your friends if it's uh, maybe something that you enjoyed and that you uh, that you got something out of. Maybe some of your friends who does VR chat could, you know, 
could learn something from, you know, two ladies who, who like to flirt more than is necessary. But, um, yeah, maybe you did, maybe you did enjoy that and you can share that with someone who, uh, who could need it too if, if you didn't need it. And, of course, you can find me on, uh, on Twitch, um, at, um, Neferti with two eyes, and that's, um, my username on YouTube, just add one more eye to the username. You can find me on Twitch. I stream usually once a week because I'm I'm too busy, so I only stream once a week. So you can find me there. Also, I stream on YouTube also. So if you're on YouTube, that's fine. Just subscribe to me and you'll get notification when I go live on YouTube. So that'll, that'll work. I'm also on Twitter, at Neferti, same username, two eyes. And... Um, yeah, that's it. And where can, can people find you anywhere in Galaxy? Uh, and not really. I mean, I want to start streaming, but that's a later on subject. There's not really anything you can find me if you will see me in Nefertiti's uh, stream. Yeah, yeah. If, if uh, anything, you'll see me here stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, you can definitely, uh, uh, you know, Galaxy's voice is pretty iconic, so chances are, even if she's in a different avatar, you will you won't know that uh, that she is indeed here. So uh, <laughs> definitely come through, hang out, come to the streams, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all um, live whenever I am live. And if Galaxy is there, I'm sure she will love seeing you guys too. So with all of that said, thank you all so much again for joining us for another episode of the Sweet Talking Podcast, and I hope that you will look forward to the next one coming soon, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully very soon. But until next time, you guys... To your podcast near you. True. <laughs> True. So, until next time, you all, please take care of yourselves. Please, um, please make sure that you are, you know, being good, being good to yourselves and being good to those around you. And uh, let's do our best to create more um, meaningful human connections with people because you never know what people have gone through and you never know how you may be able to be helpful to someone else just by you being there. So until next time, you guys, I'll see you again soon. And until then, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>